everyone, and welcome to the best of three Call of Duty esports podcast. I'm your host, Josh. Salvation League to my right is Bash underscore BO3, and to our farthest right, per use, is none other than Rex Shady Nero. And guys, he's living up to the name today. He's got the glasses on everything, and we have a ton to talk about today. I mean, this is legit. This is legit. We, this could be a solely a news show. Obviously, last week we had tons going on with roster yep. changes across the league. Like what? Five or six potential At roster least. changes going down and, and some more rumors to talk about. Whoa. Not to mention some spicy news regarding <laughs> league play, <laughs> regarding control and the rules. We got standoff coming back Whoa. and a lot more. Before That's we get sick. to any of that with predictions, so I've got to ask what's <laughs> going odd oh well josh <laughs> i am i'm feeling you know like i'm you know i'm feeling <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh yeah <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh no here we go boys and girls ladies and gentlemen um this oh. is a wednesday episode happy holidays everybody <laughs> and it's also we are recording on of course 420 so cheers cheers Cheers. to all of you who celebrate cheers we're drinking g fuel in celebration not a sponsor but no free shout outs and sam how you doing today good potential (laughs) new g fuel flavor 420 oh oh yeah yeah, you know blue right blue yeah yeah Mm, uh i'm doing good i am I'm ready to talk about this news. We got a whole different Rex to this podcast. Yeah, he is just do. vibing over <laughs> Dude, there. He's, he's straight vibing. He's got the glasses on. Yeah. Looking, I mean, he's got like like eighth grade. He's got like eighth grade summer oh, vacation oh. vibes. Oh, 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 we just oh, got, my word. Word. We, we got a shower, bro. Oh, oh. oh, sometimes you got a shower to shake it off, you know? <laughs> Shady Nero's back, back, and there he is. <sighs> he's back. Welcome to the show, Shady Nero. Happy 420. We We're back in it. Shady. Let's get it, baby. So, I mean, we have a ton to talk about today. And uh, you can listen on Apple Podcasts. You can listen yeah. on Spotify. You can watch on YouTube. You can drop a comment yes. on YouTube. And you can drop a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. And today, the notorious Shady Nero will be reading our review today. What you got for us, brother? All right. So this one comes from Dylan Rees 189 What a legend. Five nice. stars. I have a question for you. Your next podcast. Oh. Best Call of Duty podcast. I listen to your podcast at work as soon as they come out. But my question is, mm, who you. do you think the best player of each team is? And if you want to still the pit Ooh. a little, who is the worst <laughs> player on each team? I've never heard the phrase still the pit. Probably stir the pot. <laughs> but I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> still the pit or stir the pot. Tell you maybe what. I, still the pit, when baby. I first read it, I was like, is this like an English term? Like we got still a UK fan. Is this some <laughs> this is a UK terminology I don't or know like, about? Still the pit a little bit here. <laughs> still the pit. Um you know, like, that is a, a broad that's a loaded question. question. That's a broad question. I don't even know where to begin. I the mean best player, player at team. least right now, simp. Yeah, I mean, you got to say simp, right? I know some people were arguing a BZ in my comments, like when I did the tier list video. Really? Well, a BZ um, adds a lot of value. Yeah, for sure. And so like, I could see the argument there. I mean, like, you know, any of those, any of the phase guys are a pretty good argument, have an argument at least. And then, you know, you look at some of the other guys like Dashy and Envoy and Hook and Shotzi, and, you know, and the usual suspects as Clayster. a whole. Of course. <laughs> let's do this. Let's do this. Who's the best player on LAG? Vivid. Oh no! <laughs> Looking tough. <laughs> Looking tough. We might be able to get in that conversation later. But yeah, we're gonna have to get into that combo later a for sure. Foreshadowing. Um, I'd say silly right now. I, I mean, silly and vivid are both great. I mean, right now it's silly. We'll I see. Mean, <laughs> yeah, I think silly as well. Probably silly. Apathy <laughs> makes a case. Some maps. Really? And then some uh, some maps definitely not. Definitely um, not but some maps. Yeah. I don't know. The great review though. We do appreciate that Thank review. You. It's fantastic. And. uh you know, we're, that was kind of, I guess we'll count that as our quick question today and we'll sure. get right into it. So we have, because this is going to be a wild one. So um, it, uh, this is all weird because we're on a Wednesday. So, I'm yeah. so I feel like I'm so off my game. It's yeah. been so long since our last episode. It's been the longest we've ever had, probably. Goodness. So without further ado, let's get right into the news of the week. Let's go. Mm. The Call of Duty News of the Week. My word. Okay, so, I mean, 
We'll start off with one of the pieces of news that happened right after we uploaded the podcast last week. There was so much that went on just last week, let alone like, you know, the the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. And uh, within like 12 hours of us uploading the podcast, I mean, tons of news broke. And so um, we're cursed. You know, it was tough. It was tough. But let's start. Let's start here. Lan is coming Woo! back. All right. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, this is at this point old news for probably most of the people probably. out there. So we can kind of go through it pretty yes. quick. But there is, I mean, there's obviously big impacts to what that could mean for the CDL. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we don't know exactly yet what that could mean for any of the stages. Like, you know, what, what stage could be on land at this yeah. point. So I guess question one is, if you had to bet, mm-hmm. what's the first tournament that we see on land? Rex, what's the first tournament? Like the first... First like, land tournament we're going to have this year. Like, where is it going to be? No, no when, just when, which one? When? when? Which, which stage? Um, Will it be stage three in four weeks? Will it be stage four? Uh, I'll say stage four, but I could see it being stage three. Yeah. The, yeah, the stage three major. Yeah. It's definitely possible hey, for I sure. I think it'll be a major. Yeah. I, I'd imagine so. I, I, mean, almost, I almost thought it'd be like stage five. Major. Oh, win. really? And Leading into champs. champs? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Just to give it, like, a lot of room to right. breathe. I mean, realistically, I, we're not going to have fans at first, for sure. No. I mean, well, yeah. I, that'd well, be very unlikely. Think? Maybe? I, I, I don't know. Maybe? Would maybe they limited, do it if there's no fans? Enough. Where does the money come from if there's no fans? True. Competitive integrity. This is just land in general, yeah. But, I, I mean, mean at the same great. time, it's like... Maybe they could do it with like limited capacity, um, but that's a little bit weird in like Six a sports apart. environment. Yeah, it, it's hard. Yeah, it's definitely tougher that way. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I would say I would definitely put my money that by for sure by stage four major. Yeah, I put like a ten percent chance maybe stage three mm-hmm. uh, major, but I feel pretty good about stage four though. Four I mean that'll nice. you know that'll be coming like what end of May? Yeah, or beginning of June. I, I'm mm-hmm. not. I'd have to look at the dates again. Um, but right in there somewhere. So I feel pretty good that though. Would be I sick. mean. How do you feel like, I mean, it, do you think there's going to be a legit impact of these guys on land? I mean, there's a lot of players in this league who have never played a pro land tournament a lot mm-hmm. at this point. Now, um, of course, a lot of these guys have played amateur tournaments, yeah. you know, with uh, challengers or whatever last year, or whatever mm-hmm. it was. But um, what are your thoughts on the impact, Sam? Yeah. I will say for like, I know there's like a lot of tweets about like how some of these guys have never played land or whatever. Right. Like that. But you, you look at Simp, you come in and literally destroyed on land right. his, his, his first year. Obviously, Simp is kind of, you know. A unicorn in the space. A unicorn yeah. in the space. But <laughs> I wouldn't count these guys out that I've never played on land before. Because I, I think skill does translate. But I do think. These, a, these vets have been talking, man. Yeah. The vets have been talking. Here's the thing, though. If you do land without, without a crowd, that might. Maybe help. it's not the same effect. Exactly. Like, what if it like helps out? Because you know, it's a good transition to yeah. like land, like the yeah. land aspect you, of things. You you go back to I don't know if you guys remember Shotzi's interview at London where uh, it was like it was, uh, it was a good so, match. It was so hard to watch. It was good. <laughs> like was, he was terrified. Uh, he was he was terrified, and like I think that had a huge impact on you know the way he started and he played, out, and he played terrible that he first did. event, but. Obviously, he grew into it. So maybe having land without a crowd will help these guys that have never played on land ease into it, and we may not see a big of an impact on land versus online. You know, so I I don't know if it'll have this ginormous impact. Maybe, but I think a crowd has to has to do with it too. You know, for sure. So I don't know. I I put I put my money on the first land we see. It really won't have that big of an impact on what we've seen. I think so, so far. too. So yeah, Rex, agree, disagree. Um, I feel like there are going to be players who are going to play bad, like they're these rookie players, but it's not going to be all of them, but I think people are going to pick and choose, like, this guy did bad and he's new, but it's like... And that's because of land. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's because of land, but it's like, well, he's like, but like, then you saw, you know, Awakening just start, he was just going off this whole time, but we just kind of like, you know, sweep that one under the rug. So I have a feeling it's going to be kind of like, some people will kind of crumble, um, but some people like, 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 let's say Venom is going to be the guy that's like, Lan is just not going to be great for him. But yeah. then somebody mm-hmm. else is going to do really well and people are going to just pick the Venom argument and just stick with that when it's just not totally the case. 
Um, right, but it'll affect it, some people. I think it'll affect some people. For sure. I mean, like, you know, you've seen rookies have bad events oh, yeah. online. Like, it, it happens. It's Absolutely. like it's not going to not happen, you know? So yeah. it's like, at some point, you you just end up having a bad event because it was a bad event, exactly. you know? And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I, I realistically, I think it's going to matter. It will, mm-hmm. but it matters more when there's thousands of fans there. Yes. If that's not the, if there isn't a thousand fans there, or two thousand, or three thousand, or four thousand, whatever it is, yeah. a big number of fans there live, I'm not convinced it's going to have as big of an impact mm-hmm. as some people think it will. But oh, you, but you still do give those slight like 50 50 matchups to the team that's a little bit more veteran, the team that has more experience on land, the team that's done it a million times. Yeah. Like you might give a tiebreaker in that sense to a team, but like for I, the first, for the first, <clears throat> for the first land, yes, yeah. maybe give it to the vets. But I think get to your third land, everyone's gonna, be, I think, be acclimated at that point. Yeah, I think so for the most part, for sure. So I mean, a little bit different. It'll be a little bit different if it's champs. It's like mm-hmm. you know the second or third land, and then then it's like uh, millions of dollars are on the line, and yeah. there's. Seven thousand, seven, eight thousand fans there because yep. COVID's completely done. Hopefully by then, and yep. then uh, you know we got a packed stadium, mm-hmm. and then it's a little. That's a little different for someone. Yep. So mm-hmm. that's where it gets really interesting. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait to see us back on land, and I'm sure once we actually get an official announcement for when when the land's actually coming back, we'll talk about it more, and then have a better like idea of what teams to talk about and which players um, to talk about. With, with, when it comes to land so um let's talk the dlc stuff real quick for call of duty and the season three stuff for, uh, all the new content coming obviously wow. the big headliner news there is that standoff is coming back that's to Black Ops, oh, yes cold war although that's it's not fun. coming back at the beginning of the season because why would they do that come on come on man oh, it hurts but uh but at some point during the year so probably mm. after stage three yeah so which does. heading into stage four we'll finally get standoff yep. by mm-hmm. what is it be like may mm-hmm. mid-may we're gonna have we're finally gonna have a uh, standoff in the mix so the obvious question there before we get to the other stuff about the dlc or whatever what map should standoff for place i mean what comes to mind checkmate, for you checkmate, probably right checkmate S and I hope checkmate S and <laughs> i mean that's the obvious one that comes to mind yeah we'd, we'd imagine we'll be playing hard point as well mm-hmm. and the control's a toss-up it's yeah. hard to say if it'll play well yeah. Um, on a map like Control that, it will be weird because it's like if it's like Z shape. It feels very cornered yeah. off. Yes, it's just so kind of like, weird. If it would feel like it'd be really easy to lock down. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how yeah. that would play yeah. exactly. I, uh, I I really hope Hardpoint and S and D obviously make it right. Mm-hmm. Give take out checkpoint S and D. Give us standoff and then Hardpoint. Do we replace it or Apocalypse? Apocalypse maybe? No, don't replace Apocalypse. I mean. The know. problem is teams just don't play Apocalypse right now. And yeah. that's because, of the, I mean, everyone's talked about the P2 situation where it's yeah. like such a money hill yeah. and it's yeah. such a disadvantage to select Apocalypse because mm-hmm. then you don't get the good side. Yeah. And so it's like no one picks it because you get screwed if you pick it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, even though teams wouldn't mind playing it if the other team's picking it. So yeah. um, that's why it's a tough situation there. Otherwise, it's like, you know, Checkmate seems people seem to enjoy Checkmate. You know, it's like Garrison. Yeah. Eh. I don't know. I think I'd be interested to see it get added in as like a sixth map. I, well, but that's what I say. Like, can we just add it in? I don't know. I'd be interested in that. Yeah. But uh, it's they, yeah. re- recently teams. It seems like the CDLs and pl- pros have preferred just having five maps be available. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Rex thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. You guys, I would try and pick it as just a six map. Throw it in there. Hard points. I don't know if anyone has a big gripe against any of the hard points right now. So yeah, that's the thing. Why take them out? Just leave them in. Let's just right. add standoff in. I almost wonder if they would would want to get rid of Garrison, Hardpoint. Really? I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. I, I don't think they would. No. I mean, maybe a few teams. I mean, the teams who suck at it, I'm sure yeah. would. Yeah. But Face <laughs> probably wouldn't want to get rid of it. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'd be more. I'd, I'd be more inclined to believe that it's either going to be Apocalypse or they add just, in just a add fifth in. map. Yeah. Or a sixth map. I mean. Um, yeah. Because it just doesn't feel that likely for any of the other maps. I don't know. What do you think would be the second most likely map? I like me personally. Checkmate for me is like I know I know it plays better than S and D hard yeah. point on checkmate, but checkmate to me is just like a very weird map to me. I don't know. I don't enjoy playing it personally, but yeah, I'm I'm sure. I feel like I see hard point a lot on on checkmate. Pros seem to enjoy it. Pros seem to enjoy it. So it probably wouldn't be checkmate. Um. Yeah. 
I know. It's like Moscow. It's it's not very fun of a map, but it's a decent balanced map. It is. You know, and the streaks are fun on that map because streaks are always really mm-hmm. important. So like yeah. playing for the streaks kind of makes it fun to watch in that sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I really enjoy, I mean, Apocalypse is a really enjoyable map, but yeah, the problem is the P2. Yeah. If we could get the P2 switch and we just add it in uh, a standoff as a sixth map, that'd be great. But I don't know if that would necessarily happen. No. Um, I think it's just more likely overall. I'd definitely put it at a high likely chance that Apocalypse gets removed. Yeah, and then they add in standoff, which would yeah. be a blast. Which wouldn't be bad. So I don't know. Any other thoughts there with standoff specifically? I mean, S and D, we're all in agreement. Checkmate blows. Oh, terrible! And it's not fun to watch. It's pretty unbalanced. Yeah, defense wins all the time, and it just sucks. And it's like I don't want to watch this. So yeah, I think overall that that's pretty solid to say the least. And then uh, other stuff with the updates, pretty straightforward. Uh, the interesting thing with the potential patches that'll be coming through. Again, this launches a little bit later as we're recording this. Yeah. So we're not going to spend too much time talking about the, the theoretical patch stuff because mm-hmm. we're not sure what's going to exactly happen. Yeah. They said that there are going to be tweaks to the Krig and assault, uh, assault rifle barrel attachments as well as SMG sprint speeds. Mm-hmm. So I'd, ra- I'd rather not see them make it slower for smgs yeah it's kind of weird like would they make it faster though i don't know maybe i i, I think it'd be better to be faster than, than not be but i suppose um any other thoughts there with the potential of the krig what if they nerf the crap out of the krig now that would be something another meta chains <laughs> oh that gosh. would be wild um bring back it, the m4 i mean they'd probably XM4. xm4 well it would just be a qbz then they would just Keep the XM4 QBZ, GA and it would yeah. be the QBZ at that point. Like, bro. Unreal. But yeah, so keep your eye out on that for the Krig and the assault rifle barrels because, uh, you know, th- that could change a potential, lot. There. P- potential meta change. Yeah. So uh, we'll be interested to see how that affects things moving forward. And then the new control rules were also yes. kind of implemented this week as well. And, you know, there was some debate about how exactly it was going to work with. The overtime rules, as well as ad- adding additional time. So what they ended up deciding was for the overtime rules, it is going to switch to capturing zones. So how many zones you capture will be the decider. And I think if it's tied, then you do kills. Oh. So it's a little bit, a little bit, probably, I think overall more fair and encourages offensive teams to take more risks and push for uh, captures, which is, I think, pretty cool overall. And then... Uh, and then the other thing is that they decided to revert back to the one minute capture times. You have to capture the whole thing to get oh, the free. extra minute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So because pros had some issues and gripes with rounds being too long because you could get two, an extra 40 seconds by getting two zones capped on a or the other, you know, yeah. the remaining zone and the, the rounds could really drag out. So I don't know. Happy with that, Rex. I'm happy with it. I think the ticks definitely needed to have more of an impact in the like like a better impact. Like the adding time was right. just a little too crazy. This rewards it in I think a great way where it's like it's not just based off the kills, but if you're getting the ticks, you're playing that objective, you can get that good side in the overtime. For sure. So like mm-hmm. I think I think it that's a great change. Yeah, I'm a big fan, Sam. Yeah, no, I I agree. I I initially I really wanted it to be where it was like 20 seconds per per tick, but I can see where it would be annoying, like where you would see... An, Control an, can already go on for a while right now. An extra now. 20 to 40 seconds per round, and but like not have the offense win at all. Right. So, so yeah. you could in theory mm-hmm. add like an extra three, four minutes to the yeah. game for literally no reason, yeah, in theory. Weird. But yeah, no, for sure having the defense... Um, uh, decided, the tiebreakers. Yeah, tiebreakers decided by the, the, the ticks for sure is like... Is huge because you know you can you could kill horde and not really do anything and mm-hmm. still like get the win because you 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 kill horde right oh for sure um, so so yeah no I I'm a huge fan and I'm excited to see how how it plays out and maybe how it might change the way some teams play those like last last second um, control rounds so yeah I mean you're you're not gonna like 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 let's say checkmate. You know, a lot of those teams on offense or whatever would just sit in the back of their spawn yeah, and then just kill with, with 10 kills yeah. left and just not move for the yeah. last 30 seconds because it's absolutely chalked. Yeah. Or maybe even the last 45 trying seconds to like yeah. save their lives and st- to yeah. save their lives in round yeah. four to play for defense in round five. Yeah. So it's like, you know, now you're going to have to see teams. There's going to be some potential for teams to absolutely slaughter people yeah. 
<laughs> you know, depending on how it works. And so it's going to be a really interesting, like, uh, you know, thought process there with how you want to approach it. And so, you know, you're probably going to see teams stack more now to just try to get those zones captured. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Even even like last second, trying to even just capture one tick off of A. Like right. you'll, that, you'll see now, those last second pushes. Because before you might see like, okay, I'm going to push out, try to play for spawn kills. But yeah. now it's like, it's more beneficial for us to stack this and try yeah. to get that extra tick, which yeah. might be the tiebreaker. Yeah, not even like the point, just the tick itself. So, so that'll be really, really fun to see the differences moving forward with how teams will try to dr- try to like address that in like rounds three and four, especially. Yeah, um, or De- what that could look like. Definitely more aggression. We're going to see a lot more aggressive play. Yeah, so in the last cool. like thirty or forty seconds yeah. of rounds, for can sure. Speed up so. control maps too. Yeah, because the lives will go down. The lives will go through probably a little bit faster there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think overall pretty fun change. So um, let's go through some like the little bit of spicy news of this week as spicy well. Meatballs. So um, let's start with I guess some of the small stuff. Uh, Zuma had mentioned he's trying to revive this S and D scene, and he was considering throwing some tournaments on <laughs> on like Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays throughout the weeks, like S and D only tournaments mm-hmm. to like really help revive the S and D scene, which I think is pretty cool. So keep your eye out for that. No oh, free yeah. shout outs for Zuma, cool. of course. Yeah, oh yeah. You know he's he he's doing some good stuff over there. And. Uh, I mean, that's just always good stuff. And then basically, I guess there's a whole, you know, Dashy was on the eavesdrop this week mm-hmm. and he talked about his situation with OGLA last year. We got more clarity on finally about what was going on with that situation. Basically, if, if you remember, there was rumors of Dashy asking for a trade right after he had signed with OGLA. And yeah. everyone was like, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah, like, why? what in the world is happening? Yeah. And that started us. I mean, we talked about that, you know, at the beginning of last year, where it was like, those were just signs of bad vibes Horrible. from the beginning from LA Thieves or from a well, LAG. And uh, it kind of lingered basically throughout the year, resulting in Dashy getting benched right before champs or right before the last the last few matches of the year before yeah. champs. I know. Somewhere in there. It was weird. One of the last few home series of the year. So uh, definitely wild. And it, it, it got crazy there. So he basically said that in, in like in that time that, uh, you know, leading up to that, he was a team of three with Tej and Scump, yeah. and they wanted to all three play together. And then there was the whole situation with Hex and, and not sure if he was going to get a spot or not in the CDL. And then Tej was like, bro, I just got offered this insane contract from, from, LA, from LA Optic. Uh-huh. I'm going to sign this thing. Yeah. So then Tej decided to go there, and then Scump was like, formal, hey, buddy. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, then they, they figured that out. So then Dashi got caught in the middle, yeah. and he's and pretty interesting. So at this point, I'm just rambling. No, but long but story short, Dashy kind of got put in a tough spot where like LA, LA, or GLA was like, yo, here's a huge contract, but we're only going to give you like 24 hours to sign it. Yeah. And uh, he felt like they were being a little scummy mm. and uh, it put him in a tough spot. And then he signed it and immediately regretted it and wanted to join the Huntsman. Yeah. yeah. Well, it gave the impression too that Huntsman Hex was not getting a spot. Right. Yeah. As well. Yeah, um, and the, yeah, that that uh, OGLA was telling them that he was for sure not getting one. Yeah, but then he was reaching out to Scump supposedly, and Scump really wasn't giving him much info either. Yeah, and that's how Dashy ended up on OGLA. Yeah, and then after the Huntsman got announced, he was like, "Bro, I yeah. want to join that team." Yeah. So, what would you have thought if this team was instead of Gunless Dashy from the beginning of the year? That would have been scary. Yeah. I mean, obviously, with how Dash with with having Gunless ended up failing in the with they're not working out with that team, so that would have been Envoy, Arcides, Formal, Scump, and, and Dashy. Dashy. That would have been nice. Would have been that would have been pretty nice. Yeah, not if, gonna lie. Yeah, because you know we we saw Dashy ha- have his moments for sure on uh, in Modern Warfare, and you kind of wonder if like had the vibes been there for him and he wanted to actually try, could we have seen like that team just be disgusting from the start. Yeah. You know, so. it's possible. So, but here's the thing though. We were saying that that Huntsman team was going to be disgusting with gunless on it. Like what happened to the right. whole gunless hype everyone had here? Well, like, like and, and that was a, ended up being a vibe situation. To be fair, they were yeah. nasty at the beginning. They won. Yeah. They won. Mm-hmm. But, and see, I, I just don't know if like really gunless had anything like to me, it was more of, I don't know. It's a personality class. It was a scumpy gunless. Their their personalities just don't. Yeah, they don't work together. I just that's, don't think yeah, like, that's the straight up what it I was. I still think like it was gunless being this toxic person. I think, like you said, it was just like 
a clash of personalities. Yeah, Scum's a goofball, like, and Gunless would rather be serious during practice. Yeah, so. And uh, well, then you pair that with Envoy v. Gunless, and yeah. kind of like the the pretty strong opinions there. It just didn't yeah. work out. Yeah, which you, I, 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 like, I wouldn't blame Gunless for that whole situation at all, right. honestly. So, so. And then when you throw Dashy in the mix, I mean, he's so easy going. We're seeing how well they're vibing this year together, yeah. and it's like, you throw RCs back on that squad, like, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> it's a pretty good team. I That's don't know that team. that would have been pretty good for the for uh, the Huntsman last year, but it been yeah. wild. Um, definitely interesting to kind of think about, you know, in that situation, and pretty juicy that he was asking for a trade. Lit- like he confirmed that he did actually ask for a trade <laughs> right away before the season started, <laughs> which like, is wild. Oh. Um, it definitely makes a lot more sense for why OGLA struggled yeah. so bad at the beginning of last year because yeah. they were terrible, they were and that Dashu was the guy that was drop the one dropped yeah yeah, yeah. and, and that kind of that honestly makes his like coming in during piccadilly and Amazing. doing that thing even a little bit better <laughs> i know it's like and then the joe burrow over. smoking in the locker room gif yeah. afterwards but uh just, just absolutely over. wild <laughs> uh but okay so other stuff inside the amateur scene which is obviously pretty wild um you know parasite was kind of wow. the headline of this week so ooh, ooh, what right a story. before i mean you get, we gotta talk about it right before yeah. the roster lock an hour before the roster lock he tweets like, yo, no <laughs> chance. I'm mind blown. And he ended up getting dropped like an hour or so before the yeah. roster lock for the Elite Series qualifiers. Yeah. And uh, he basically picked up a pickup team and they ended up qualifying when his former squad didn't. Like, now, holy. let's go over who that former squad was. This is where the real drama is. It was right. Fire, was Mac, mm-hmm. and... Sib. Yeah, Sib, Sib was who replaced Parasite, though. Yeah. Fire Mac and Z- it wasn't Zapdius. Temp? No, who was it? Oh, I should definitely know this. Uh oh. Sorry. Anyways, Twitter. the big or names Twitter. to notice there are Fire and Mac. Because, like, they were like bro Migos yeah, 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 yeah. with Parasite. And the fact that, like, and he thought, like, I got, like, my two, like, great friends and challengers are kind of like, you know, he's like dadded, you know, fathered these oh, people. Oh, for sure. And then they dropped him an hour before roster lock, which is like, that's just a dagger to the heart. And then feel total betrayal. They then don't qualify and Parasite's pickup squad an hour before roster lock, no practice or anything qualifies. It's just like insane poetic justice, really. Yeah. I mean, like, and and, and like for that to come through in that way, it was just wild and you know, he was hyped and basically between like this is one of the best moments of, you know, of the past few years for me. And um, it's just wild with how that ended up playing out for him. Um, Parasite definitely. just keeps winning. Yeah, I mean, he does, you know, he really, really does. And so it's like because um, you look at that team and it ended up being, you know, Mochilla, Glory, Llama God and Parasite, like a total pickup squad. Mm-hmm. You know, for for a situation like that, and so for it to come through in that way was just really impressive, to say the least. So, I mean, any other thoughts there with like that situation and how it ended up playing out? I Do mean, we think <laughs> Parasite can make it back into the league again this year? I mean, maybe. it'd be tough. It would I be feel tough like with Parasite. It's almost like he needs a team, like an expansion team, to pick him as like their staple guy. Like I guess London does with Shawnee to be like Parasite. You're the guy, and then Parasite can organize who he wants around him. Because like he does yeah. keep winning in challengers. He keeps beating like these all star challengers players and stuff. He's beating them, but these all star players are the ones getting picked up and not him. But he's the one winning, which is like that's what makes the whole thing crazy about it. He had a bad run in London, sure. But it was a tough situation just from the get go. And I feel bad for him is like that is kind of like that was what his showing was at the pro league was London, which was just a mess, right? Yeah. So for sure. I have hope for Parasite still. Yeah, it's gonna be wild. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think I'd be pretty surprised. I mean, it would be it would be very small odds for to give him a chance to get back into it this year. Um but, but it's got to happen at some point. Maybe not this year, but at some point. You've got to no, get back I mean, yeah, into next it. Next year, Nobody again, keeps winning like that and just like... It's the battle for the expansion teams next year. And at the end of the day, it's like, it's very possible that, that it could work out. It's just hard to say that like, you know, a team would have to basically say like, yo, Parasite, we want you to be our cornerstone. And then you're picking up, you know, you're sifting through, you know, and players at that point. 
And uh, it definitely doesn't get easy, no, you know? it is hard. Yeah. It's, it's definitely tough. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, saw, I mean, Major Maniac's back in the Elite Series is, again, yeah, which is cool. Really cool That was the, the UT crew squad with Yee's uh, Major Maniac Phantoms and Rex, which was chill. And then uh, LAG's Academy, of course, is still there and doing their thing with Chino, Exceed, Mental, and Nero. And then uh, it, the, we had the TMNT squad. And then uh, Triumph, Subliners Academy, Built by Gamers, E-Star, and Fantastic Four are the full teams of eight that. heading into this Elite Series. So definitely Stack a stacked one inside the, in, inside the NA scene. Um, European scene, we've got Elevate, Mavericks Gaming Club, Obtained, Orglis, Amelia Strays, Team War, Team 3G, and Pushing Gaming. And uh, it's going to be a pretty, it's going to be a really, really nice, uh, I think a really, really cool Elite Series. I mean, they've got some great teams all over the board there, and it's awesome. Yeah, and shout out to also Wild Shift, who's doing like daily updates on the challenger yes. scene which is amazing that's a great idea facts obviously go sh- go go check out the homie i hold shift no free shout outs of course no free shout outs shift of course wow and uh side note have you seen maverick gaming club's logo because it's some hot fire flames it's like poseidon it's hot in the eu it's flames. in like the eu that, scene wow that is like the best logo it's I've fire seen. i'm telling you it's wait sick. i gotta look this up yeah, Dude, yeah, yeah look yeah, it up yeah. man look it up it's impressive um compare their logo to team 3g <laughs> <laughs> really good really good yeah no it's fire it's like uh it's literally poseidon yeah holding his trident and like he is just jacked, jacked dude. I mean, it is out he's yoked and uh Where this is I like this at? um it's, it's on a like, link it's on the challengers uh website it's on the website for challengers. look at the link under three of our doc yes yeah. the doc documento the documento um, yeah, it's also yeah, so it's there, but uh, very impressive. I, I I'm rooting for Mavericks based off the logo. That's, um, that's also wow. the that's the uh, Spanish squad too, yeah. with like Yako Super Sukri and Eric Boom. So pretty cool. And they pretty used cool. the three as an E. Yes, total gamers, man. Total gamers, gamers baby. baby. Um, but that'll be fun to see what happens there. So, um, if we talked more about if we talked more about challenges, we'd be here literally all day. All we have, day. We haven't talked the roster changes yet. Jeez. Oh my goodness, dude. It's going to be insane. So, okay. Let's just transition to the roster changes here. Get right into and, it. And uh, that'll lead us into basically our conversation about the groups and then mm. our predictions, which is, is kind of like our whole podcast. So, yeah. uh, really short summary for what's going to be a long conversation Woo. here uh, with a lot to go through. So, where do we even Buckle begin in. with the roster stuff? Rex, where do you want to begin? Should we start with Zaptius? Let's start with Zaptius. All righty. This is turning into the Western London Royal Ravens Holy real quick. But Zaptius crap, has joined the London Royal Ravens. Dylan is seeing the bench, man. Jeez. This is getting wild. It's I mean, insane. Zaptius has been a guy that we've been talking about a lot. I've been a big supporter yeah. of Zaptius the past few weeks. Really wanting to see him get a chance. And I, I mean, I'll tell you, I did not think it was going to be London who made the move. No. And uh, I think it was the are. right move, though. If I'm being completely honest, I yeah, think it's the mean, right move. Yeah, lead the way. What, yeah, what are your thoughts with the, with the move, Zaptius, and what does it mean for London with Dylan on the bench now? Well, here's the thing. Dylan has been lackluster, I guess, on London thus far. Like, he's definitely had his moments, but that's all they've been is just moments. With, right. He's had a really bad two series. The last two series were really, really bad. And, like, it, it just seems like he's not contributing as much as that as he could and what that team needs from him. And then, you know, with Paul X, who then it's like, well, let's add Zaptius. They have their whole connection already there. You have Zed who's just popping off. You got your EU teammate guy with, with, with Shawnee. Dude, I think you have the make of something pretty, pretty awesome here, to be honest with you. I think you have something really cool building in London. I think this London team is going to, they're going to become pretty good. I think. The crow is kind. Yeah. So what do you think of Clayster's statement then about uh, Dylan and um, Dylan and Zed? Zed? Zed should never split up. I mean, that was a, that was Clayster a quick played one that series was. against him, and you know, then the next time they play, they lose, and then they lose. It's like maybe they had the good series against New York, and that's why I think that whatever it might be. May, okay, sure, I'll say it. He's wrong. Dylan is like. <laughs> Like, <laughs> oh my word! Like, we have I think, officially. Wow, I think this is, this a good is this calling out groundbreaking. Clayster. Wow! I, I think this is a good move. Exposes Clayster. 
four twenty, baby. No, no. I think this is a good this is a good move though. I think this is the right move that London should have made. Man. Mm. Thoughts, Sam? It's just weird, man. I like so I so badly want to see Black Ops four Dylan. I know. Like I mean, how much have we harped on it the past year and a oh, half? We like literally just like, when are we gonna see this? When are we gonna see this? When are we gonna see this? Right. Because like he, never did. he he was like legit. Unreal. The top three player. At, at points, guaranteed top six. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't know if it's just like a pacing issue. He just can't slow down or maybe it's Lan. He doesn't have the mojo. It could be. So I, I hope the best for him. We I don't think he has a Twitter. Like we haven't no, even dude, seen him he like doesn't. I tweeted about yeah, that. Yeah, he ended up deleting it. Oh, really? Which yeah. is like weird. Really right. weird. I'd be curious to see like, you know, his thoughts and if he's going to be trying to d- d- make challengers a thing. I have no idea. So yeah, I, hope he's he's in a good, I hope he's in a good mental state. Yeah. You think he's done with COD? No. I, don't, no. I, I think, I don't know. Why would he delete his Twitter? I don't know. He did that Who a while back, deletes their Twitter? Though? He had a ton of fall- Really? Wow. I'm not exactly sure when, but it wasn't like very, I don't think it was that recently, right? It wasn't like after he got dropped. I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I, I think there's still, there's still this like beast to be awakened within Dylan. We've, we've seen it. I mean. So it's just a matter of somehow unlocking it. Maybe I don't know. it was just a flash in the pan. You a really so? long I mean, flash. It, it could was a, be a it was, like all, it, it was all year long. It was all year long though. Like. I would like believe it if it was like one event he popped off and like that was it. But like, right, man, there it was, was a times span that, of like four or five months. There though. was times that recipro- that reciprocity squad was just unreal, and so right. I don't know. Well, we'll see what happens, I guess. But I, I'm, I think this could be really good, good, good movie. You have the for sure. You have the vibes, obviously, with Paul and you know um, Zap, and I mean again, Zapius has been one of the. You know, the most winning players of the past year and a half in challengers. Yeah. He's always been on competitive teams. Yeah. And, you know, I think it was just only a matter of time till someone gave him a chance. And again, we've seen Zap in the Pro League before, obviously, back on a midnight, yeah. you know, with in, in BO4. Yeah. And they were good. They were and good they squad. were really, really good. So, you know, he was after being a pro in the past, you know, it's time for him to come back in the league and and see what would happen. And, you know, he's he's doing his thing. So I don't know. It's hard to say if, if they're truly going to be better. Yeah. Do you see potentially the hardships with how many roster changes they're making with like... I mean, bro, do you see that graphic of how many teammates Shawnee's yeah, had? that's crazy. <laughs> like, how do you build, bro, chemi- how do you build chemistry with... Shawnee's gone through the gauntlet of teammates. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Seriously. And Shawnee's the untouchable one, which is like... He is. I, I yeah. mean, now that I get Shawnee, that just seemed weird. That just seems weird. To me. What are the odds they sign Gravity and replace Shawnee at some point? That'd be crazy. I, mean, at this I would point, say low. I would say three, low. Like, the Shawnee semester. seems to be their guy. Like, yeah. They seem very loyal to Lonnie, Shawnee, and Shawnee seems very Lonnie. loyal to them. Lonnie. Lonnie. <laughs> yeah. No, the, I mean, it is interesting. I, I could. Because, like, if you drop Shawnee, then it's like Zed's the only European. It gets, I don't know. I feel like that doesn't, Weird. that wouldn't make much sense. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with you. It's probably not very likely, but I didn't see a lot of people talking about that on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Gravity's a pretty deserving player from the AMP scene as well. I mean, he's I mean, from mm-hmm. Phase, Atlanta Phase yeah. Academy last year to this year playing very, very well, you know, too. So West Star. Yeah, with, yeah. with Wester, of course. So yeah, yeah, it's possible, but I don't know. Okay, so I guess overall, does this make, it's, it's a yes or no. <laughs> does this make London better? <laughs> We were to ask this question every three weeks. I know. <laughs> um, yes. I'm going to say yes. Really? Yes. Absolutely confident. No. <laughs> I'm not confident in my yes. <laughs> nice, 90, dude. 90, 90% of the time, it works 100% of the time. <laughs> right. I, I mean, Zaptius should be able to adapt a little bit more than Dylan, I think, and play to that pacing yeah. a little bit better overall. You know, and, and like yeah. Zap's been a, been a flex at points and uh, he, he can play main SMG though. And he, that's what he should be doing here again if yeah. he's replacing Dylan. So kind of having to duo here with, with yeah. Uh, Zed. Yeah, ho- yeah, hopefully him and Zed can get the pace correct. Right, that's and, the thing. It's like, yeah. you know, can, can they figure that out? I'm not sure. So yeah. it's hard for me to commit to them being better than they were before. I'm leaning on that they'll be more consistent than they were before because yeah. Dylan is, you know, he, he isn't matchup proof. He's a guy that, you know, we talk a lot about a lot that will struggle against the teams that have hard counters, which is like the Simpson Abizis or like the really, you know, a great, a, a, the best SMGs in the game. 
he generally struggled against. Yeah. And he was very good against, you know, the other teams. <laughs> so it's like, it gets interesting. I'll um, tell you what, I though. do think London will, be more, London will be more competitive as a whole consistently, but I'm not sure. I, I would give like a 20% better. The so when we get to land, for, when I, I, if we get to land, I could see London falling back down again. Okay. I was going to say this team is online warriors so far. Yeah. Yeah. I can so, see it. And like these guys have proven that they, they can keep the passion while playing online. That's going to carry over to the pro scene when they're playing online again. But once you hit that land, things might switch up a little bit. Can they keep it, the momentum going with a yelling crowd? Okay. I mean, it's going to be interesting. That I'm not so sure about. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit weird now that you've got two Americans on on the London team, and we hadn't seen that yet. You know, with with with, with that type of aspect, so pretty interesting, especially with like the London crowd. The London crowd usually was always so so behind their full European roster trying oh, to hoorah yeah. it. You know, so it'll be really fun to see that on a, in a land environment too. But thoughts, Sam? I was gonna say we have seen the honeymoon period be pretty real this year, where people or teams get better for like a match, <laughs> and then kind of fall off. So maybe they're better in the short term. But then just not oh, fall man. through. You never know. But but not not with Zap and Paul. Like they were on West Star. Like they were like on the best team in Challengers, consistent best team. Yeah, they're oh, gonna yeah. be able to keep that momentum of like playing well. If they can yeah. play super well in Challengers, consistently getting first place, they're gonna be able to keep that online. I think momentum going into the pro league because they were able to do it in Challengers for a really long time. It's not like that's gonna be like a one hit wonder thing. They're gonna come in and be able to for keep. Sure producing these results and they were consistently scrimming you know all the pro teams it's like you know as wester because all the pros saw them as the the best am team and so yeah, yeah. i mean they're very comfortable playing in an online environment against and the I pros think they're confident too. for sure for sure so it, it could be really interesting again i mean the x factor is how does zap play with with the zed and like what does that look like and how does that yeah. duo play in like as 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 smgs mm-hmm. yeah. and, and zap with his team and what that could look like mm-hmm. it's really hard to predict right now with, uh, yeah. with so many moving pieces and uh i would say i'm moderately more optimistic but like they would still be a bottom three team in my book probably so yeah that's Agreed. fair that's fair okay all these teams are making changes it's like it's it's still wild card season for me. Like these teams, any any one team can have a great day and just win the whole thing. The next piece of news, which is definitely interesting, which obviously still is very 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 juicy still, yeah. and yet to be confirmed. Yes, um, that's still lingering. We saw this yesterday. Is that Vivid very well may be getting benched, and uh, what weird? It's not sure exactly what's going on yet uh this is from cdl intel where he said he's hearing that it's very likely that mm-hmm. vivid might be getting benched by lag and uh mm-hmm. you know i mean i think the whole community kind of had the same reaction like vivid mm-hmm. what out of all the players on that team <laughs> out of those four you're vivid, benching vivid. <laughs> I mean, I think realistically, you, you could say he's been probably, I mean, silly might be the most consistent player this year, but Vivid has been, sh- has shown the most upside for sure Absolutely. this year no, on that team. And no argument there. When you stare at the stat sheets, obviously stats only show so much, but like you look at his damage per game, you look at uh, his, his pace and his pacing and how he plays around the map and what he's done with his squad. I mean, I've always, I've been saying, I, and personally, I've been saying that they do need a roster change. And I, I was on the side that they might need two roster changes to really make a big impact. But that was kind of in mind of keeping Vivid around. Uh, so this is a bit of a surprise. I mean, they must want they must want to play a slower game then. They must want to go full fully slow. I was going to say, like, yeah. like, they they must not like the way he plays. Because to me, it seems like Vivid was the only one. Like, he was the one player you you count on to like make make the like entry or like get the kills honestly the huge play exactly yeah. so it's like are you really gonna just like take that away or, just, yeah. or are you saying that like you can get someone who does it better which is kind of a weird thing to like right who, like who are you getting that's so, good i don't know cdl Maybe intel or oh, yeah. fire away rex fire away i mean think of it from the other like i i kind of can see where this team could end up becoming better from this though is that clearly Vivid was just in a different, he was just going too fast. Like he was not, like he was not synergizing with the rest of the team. Vivid right, was always very much, perspective. he was if, very much his own rogue thing. And the other three were very much more 
like working together and he was kind it's of like, off doing his own thing. Right. And maybe that's what they're targeting is like, dude, you need to play with us more and we'll be better. But like he doesn't, he's not doing that. Now you can decide which way is the right way, but I can see the perspective of like, we need someone who can synergize with us three because us three are on the same page. This one guy is not on our page. He could say he's a great player, but if he can't work together with us, you want a team that's going to be able to work together more than you want yeah. just this crazy no, all-star. Sure. I mean, and that's the argument. It's like, and, and that was my opinion that I, th- I felt like apathy might've needed to go. And I love apathy, but like the problem was I thought that apathy couldn't play up to the pace that Vivid was playing. Mm -hmm. And then I just like the upside that Vivid provided. And if you brought in another, another like challengers guy, another SMG, then they get really, really interesting. But then you're seeing two, two players, you know, silly and assault and Vivid and new guy who are now doing their own things. Yeah, but so I think like, if you have two fast like, well, SMGs that are playing assault, together. We have the three here. Now Silly's doing something different than these three. Now maybe they switch it up, but you have the majority with three already working really well together. We cannot say LAG does not have good chemistry. Like yeah. their team, <laughs> like they beat FaZe and, you know, Especially say how you want. But like, yeah, in S&D, like this team actually. But Vivid's, Vivid's a great S&D player. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah. like he is, he is, he is. But it's the it's the fact that he's not able to synergize with the rest of the team that like they can't close things out. That getting someone else who can play with these other three and become part of that synergy energy, then it like synergy energy. They see the potential of that being way better because now you actually have an actual team working together than right. three and one. So CDL Intel, you know, mentioned that he believed that it was going to be one of the academy players getting pulled yeah. up, which is. A little surprising. Mm-hmm. Um, but Silly had tweeted and replied to someone that he said, people tweet like players bench other players. That never happens. Get a grip. Mm-hmm. So like people were blaming Silly for benching Vivid. Yeah. So Silly. The thing that's weird. Why would, apparently they, why would the org bench Vivid? Right. Because Vivid was the only player that stayed from the previous year. And he was not playing back. Like, I mean, I guess... I mean, I don't know who the GM and org is, and maybe they have more in-depth knowledge on what they think is right. You, right. You, when like you first hear that, you think here. this is corporate. Corporate is making these crazy decisions when they don't know anything about COD. But very well could be someone who does know about COD, and they have this idea of that adding someone else with these three will be better. And you cannot tell me that these players did not have a conversation about drop. Like, weren't part of the conversation of Vivid being dropped. They were definitely talked to about that. Like, yeah. I can't believe that they just like were told one day. So we're getting rid of Vivid, and they're like, the other three are like, "Oh, what? Really? Wow! I don't know." Like, they, they, they had to know. Like, something like was that in the works like that? So I mean, I mean, that means Bevels and Ricky made that call then. Well, there That's you go. And those are people who know COD. Yeah, and they definitely talked to the players. They did not make this play off a whim. Players didn't yeah, technically I mean, bench it's, it's him, but they were part like, of the conversation. You know, you know, Methods last year said, I mean, yeah, we, d- we had no say with who got benched and who didn't. So it's like, we're on Toronto, so maybe that's the same situation here with LAG. Bro, but no, ch- I mean, no say? Like, you're telling me these people just went off into their own room and didn't even talk to the players that were playing with this person? I mean, it, it, it's no a new chance. philosophy for Call There's of Duty. It's conversation. possible. It's possible. Again, there that, was at I least mean, a conversation. Really, there at think, least really. we're like, what do you guys think if we got rid of Vivid? That at least is a question that would come up. So what do you guys think if we dropped Vivid? What I do mean, you guys think if we dropped Methods? What do you guys think if we dropped whoever? That, that, that is a question that would be posed. I don't care who you are. Probably. But again, Methods, for what it's worth, did say that last year they got no say in who was dropped and who wasn't. Or who was benched and who wasn't. Right. So it's like maybe teams are trying to do it that way. It's again, maybe, maybe it's not... Even if it's ninety, maybe it's ninety, maybe it's ninety-five percent coaches, and there's like a thoughts, guys. So this will completely ruin the team. No, all right, we're doing it. You know, like again, maybe that's what it is, which is possible. I mean, I the know. coaches make the final call and have that conversation, but it's not like the players are blindsided by this decision, right? For sure. I can also see though, like certain orgs, like you know, like Empire. Obviously, it's going to be like this team thing. It's a full-on team decision. But then, like with other ones, Optic, like it's full-on team decision. Yeah, but like you know, with Ultra or with you know some of these other orgs that are like really like who's just Paris. like you're, you're dropped. 
Exactly. You know, like, like it could be something like that. Some of these guys that I like, don't oh, have. Not with this team right now. But yeah, something that, that I like, don't have a history in the game, and they're kind of more set up as just like this corporation. I can definitely see that, though. You yeah. Know? Yeah, so. I meant Paris last year, not this year. But, yeah. but um, I mean, if we want to talk methods being dropped this year, you're telling me three European guys didn't drop the one NA and pick up another European player? Oh, no, player? Marky B did. Marky B, for He's sure. Guy. And Marky, Marky B is friends with these European guys. You're telling me Marky B didn't talk to these other European players? He's the one who made the decision. He's the one who took all the blame. But these players were talking with him. Like, there's no Again, way. it's very possible. It's very, very possible. Very possible. Um, it just kind of depends on the situation. Again, the majority of teams, the players are making the calls. Yeah. So it's just interesting that Silly said that um, in that reply like that. But um, again, that's not confirmed yet, though. So we do have to yeah. we do have to question, sure. like, do you think it's happening? I feel like, and who would be the replacement? I feel like it's going to happen if like those kind of rumors just don't just like. Start without some sort of ability, especially with like CDL and 12. Yeah, there were a lot of mixed it. reviews like in his replies from mm-hmm. pro players like. Huh? Yeah. Or like yeah. what? Or are we sure about this type replies? You People know, people said the yeah. same thing about Ultra and Insight, though. Yeah, and methods, methods. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Different situation, yeah. but very different. But yeah, no. I mean, so you think it's gonna happen? So who would be the player then? Do you think it's actually gonna be from their academy team? Is it gonna be Chino or Mental? Do, do they pull up Exceed? I think it'd be Exceed, kind of. They're going to do it. They're going to pull up exceed. Because they here's might. the thing. It's like, now we want to talk about org. LEG is the org that would want to have, you know, a sub, an academy player, be the one that goes up. And then LEG is somebody that I think gonna would bring stick to that whole thing. I think it would be exceed. That feels so boring. I mean, that is. It is weird, though, because, like, I, I don't know what how this would change, though, because, you know, LEG Academy is in the Elite Series. Do they pull up exceed? Are, are they, they able you to just, make you just throw you just throw vivid in there? Throw vivid in there? Can you do that? It just like I don't know. I don't know. Like because like like once you're in the elite series, I don't know like what you could do with your roster. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's a new situation for the like, CDL, which is interesting too. Because Chino just tweeted out this picture of mental in a hospital bed. So, oh yeah, so it was mental. Yeah, mental was the reason why he's got a face wrap. I'm not sure what. Oh dang! So, yeah, so so that was the other piece wow. of news is that today there was people thought that. LAG's Academy had to reschedule their match today from the mm-hmm. Elite Series. And everyone's like, uh oh, they're, they're scrimming with one of the guys. Yeah. But it was because someone was in the hospital. And apparently it's, it's, it's mental. Mentals. That's crazy. Yeah. So, so hopefully he's doing okay. Yeah. So I don't know. The, the whole situation is weird, but I could see it just be exceed switching out him and the Rocker honestly, last year. That's yeah. what, I mean, that would be the, be the play. I mean, silly assault and then exceed. Yeah. And speaking of players. They drafted him in the first round of the, the Elite Series, mm-hmm. or in the mm-hmm. Scouting Series. Yeah. They drafted Exceed, and uh, there was also a post on Reddit like post uh, pointing that out, that now the top four picks in yeah. the Elite Series are all in the CDL, mm-hmm. or in the, I'm sorry, in the Scouting Series yeah. on the first draft day, yep. are now all in the CDL. Yep. And then also Diamond Con was in the CDL from that, from that Scouting. Oh, yep. you have the list there? Yep, I sure do. So, so first four was Paul X, Venom, Standing, Zaptius. Also included in there was Diamond Con, and then Exceed was like the last one. Okay. Um, some some other notable names. Saints was in there. Yeah. Last was in Saints there. Saints could enough. make it onto that team. <laughs> yeah. Saints. Saints. Could, wait, who did, who drafted Saints? Uh, Saints was Thieves. Oh, uh, kind of pretty unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. For but, that one, but still, but Saints yeah. though is an interesting player. You could see on LAG, he fits into that kind of. Mesh. Well, he was. Oh, he was on the team last year. He was. Yeah, you, he was, wasn't he? And people are really hyping him up this year. Like, I hear a lot of people yeah. hyping him up. Oh, Saints. for sure. Well, oh, I mean, he's been killing it on it, NYSL Academy, so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, based off what CD Hotel continues to double down, that it's one of their one of their players, one of LAG's yeah. players on the Academy. So, Exceed would make the most sense there. I think so. Yeah. And uh, if that's the case, that's a huge step. Or Nero, I don't agree right? with that. That's I don't weird, agree with dude. that. What about Nero? It just seems so unlikely. I could see Nero. I don't know, man. He's been around for a while. That's biased. Shady Nero. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a Nero in the league, you know who my new favorite player is. <laughs> that is funny, though. Some Nero biased right there. No, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Again, let's say it succeed. Yeah. 
Are you actually at all more excited about this team? No, no way. No. I am way less excited about this team. Yeah. No, I'm not. Rex? Yeah, I'm not so much either. And if Vivid's benched, Vivid to Florida, yes, please. Really? That would be no. hot. And then, that would be spicy. And then re-bench Havoc? Bench Havoc. Damn. Vivid to Florida, baby. I'm in on that. That would be interesting, mm-hmm. honestly. That wouldn't be, yeah. No. They need an aggro sub, baby, and like S and D prowess. He'll fit in right there with those guys. That would that would be a pretty good move, honestly. Now that you say it, now that I'm chewing on it, yeah, it tastes good. It tastes it's real good. delicious. Yeah, it's I'd, feeling good. I I would be about that one. So um, it gets very very interesting pretty quick. So yeah. um, other things to talk about. We oh my frick, we have so much to talk about. <laughs> other things. There's a holy lot. holy cow. So um. <laughs> Let's talk temp to Paris. Yes. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm also very disappointed in ourselves that, that, about that here, last man. week we didn't talk about what's wrong with Paris. That was an absolute oh, shame dude. on our parts. Oh, I, so, it, it's, I mean, <laughs> I feel like just in the honor of it, we might just have to do it right now. So what's wrong with what's Paris? Wrong with Paris? Oh. Welcome to What's Wrong With and here we are, <laughs> baby. What's wrong with Paris? We're back. So again, last week we are going. I I had written it down, like bring it back. Bring I put it, it in all caps, but I put it at the bottom of the sheet, and I forgot to look at it. And so yeah. I I had to bring it back this week. So we yeah. had what's wrong with Paris, and of course Paris the day after, right after we were posting the podcast, temp officially signed with Paris. Yeah. It was happening during the day. He got released by LAT, and then uh, Fire got dropped by. Paris and we were like okay I mean this is happening now yep. and then boom temp to Paris so thoughts on the move I mean Rex you've been the Paris guy you've talked directly to Paris two of the last three podcasts so yeah, Rex. now we need to address them in a new sense thoughts on temp to Paris um all in all I think it's I think it's gonna be a good move in the end I think fire he had the energy but maybe just not quite the 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 brain i guess to really the vibe for the team no his vibes were peak i'm sure okay all right all right but i think just like sometimes his slang was just not quite there sometimes he makes bad like stupid mistakes it just was kind of not helping the team at all i think temp is gonna be a player who's gonna have more of that veteran brain he's gonna understand things uh more on like an overall scale or like just an overarching view of things yeah um that's really gonna set up that paris team to be more of a solid team rather than just like back like back and forth are they good are they not good they play great and they don't play great i think adding temple just add that like extra you know step forward and putting a wall yeah. there so temple will be flexing then right See, that's the thing. And then Classic and Scraps. Classic and Scraps should be the main SMGs, I'd yeah. imagine, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, unless Temp really wants to be that main SMG again. Uh, but, you know, this year so far, he had been a flex. So, mm-hmm. But right now, in the meta, that means you're basically yeah. a second main AR yeah. <laughs> for most maps. Yeah, but you kind of wonder, will that change the way Scraps plays? Or, I don't know. Or, or Classic, so like... Yeah, the roles are a little interesting on this team for could sure. Could this be a move where you, you, you know, so, similar to Rocker, where it's like Priesta moves or uh, they, they sub up major and that kind of unlocks Priesta and shifts the roles, shifts the roles a little bit? Could we see this like slight shift of roles on Paris that or, where we see like it helps they, Scraps succeed more and play may, better? It helps Scraps succeed more because I feel like the, this is quite where Scraps has to like be a, has to a, be a main slayer, a main slayer, either as a flex or a main SMG, yeah. So like, hopefully, I'm sure they're hoping that this does unlock some sort of playing power. And, right. and we've seen bit. some potential from classic and and True. like you classic know some has, ability there. Classic and, has been, and then we've seen good. Aqua as a main AR really look solid. Mm-hmm. So it's like we've seen it from each of the players individually yeah. at times. So now it comes down, and you're staring right at Temp and you're staring right at Scraps, and can yeah. they be the guys they need them to mm-hmm. be to be a top eight contender type yeah. team? You know, in there yeah. somewhere. So it is interesting. I mean, again, uh. Temp has a lot of history with Aqua and with Classic. I talked about this in my video right after, you know, the day after our podcast, because uh, he teamed with Aqua on Splice and BO4. He teamed, and then also on Echo Fox in World War II. Yeah. And then he teamed with Classic in World War II on Envy. 
And then uh, that was the Hook and Slasher team with Temp and Classic. And then he teamed with uh, Classic in AW on Elevate and on Denial with that NV squad as well. And then also on Elevate and AW. Hmm. So it's like there's been a lot of history here with those guys. And so, you know, it could work out. It could be really interesting. Thoughts on the team moving forward? Do you see the improvement in their cards, though? I would say maybe slightly, but it's hard to picture this team as a top six team still, right? Right. Yeah. I agree. I think it's going to be slightly better. Middle of the, they could get to like a middle of the pack sort of team. Yeah. yeah Competing I, with, I would say like, yeah, LA Thieves, I guess. I mean, it's like I you really want to see but... the team have like consistent search and destroy. Their search and destroy has been so hit or miss this year. It's like they've beat some good teams in S&D this year and then they come out and then they get absolutely smoked. And you're like, what is happening here? And so maybe, you know, I'd have to go back and watch a little bit more film on that and, and, and uh, break down a little mm-hmm. bit more of their assertion and destroy. Yeah. But like my initial instinct is that, you know, fire was very inconsistent in basically all three game modes. And I think especially in search and destroy with how it came down to what they played. I mean, I am interested to see, do you have that pulled up like what their worst maps were in search and destroy? Yeah. So, so in search, um, pretty much they're one and two in raid, um, oh, and one in Moscow. And then their other one was one and two in checkmate. So, yeah, nothing too crazy. Nothing then. like re- really too crazy. But overall, they are five and ten. Uh, in search, yeah, they haven't been good. No, and uh, it, I think they needed a change. It, it something had to happen there. And so temp was probably the best option available. I think a guy who could just hop right in. And they got him. You know, they got the release situation and everything. So I I'm kind of surprised out. Paris did it. I, last yeah, I mean, that was, I'm that surprised was a they actually made a roster switch. I didn't think that was going to happen. True. Yeah, we're all Anyways, like, let's pretty talk. much saying there's not going to, they weren't going to do it because of last year. Mm-hmm. They didn't even move at all. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Havoc. it gets it gets wild. So, yeah, Havoc and Florida, obviously, that officially happened. We, we were kind of been we talking for about two weeks now about what's going to, what's Florida going to do? What's this going to happen here? And, uh, you know, side note that, that what's wrong with Paris felt really, really good. I mean, is anything still wrong with Paris before we uh, officially are they in the clear now? I think they're in the clear for this week. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Because there was something wrong for a while there. We had they to were, address it. Yeah. But here we are. All right. Havoc. Yes. Thoughts this on su- this situation. Is this a lateral move? Is this a slight increase? Is this, is I this mean, a betterment? This, this is sh- like, this was is there shaking. a better option? This, this is like me. the makings of like the family getting back together. It's like you like excommunicate the one person. Cause you're like, we're going to get better, but then it's like, but we the need the prodigal him. He, son situation. He, here. He's part of our family. He makes us what we are. Like he has to be here. So like bring, have it back. I honestly see Florida getting better. Not because like, I think Havoc's is great player, but because it's just like old Florida, you know, it's like old Florida was really good. It showed, you know, really well. And you know, Pharaoh was obviously part of that, but Havoc was too. And maybe this will be that magic coming back for them. Um, yeah. They can reignite it, it, something possible. there with them. It's and possible. And Havoc knows he's that guy now. Havoc maybe has a little more pressure on his back, too, where he's like, I know, okay, man. I time for me to really show up here. Again, I always go back to the winning formula. And gen- so far this year, all the best teams have two legit SMGs who, when they're winning, they're slaying out and dominating maps. And then you have a legit slaying flex and a very, very talented main AR, which they have those two. They need Neptune and they need Slacks to be, one of them needs Havoc. to step up and be, um, or, um, Havoc. Havoc now. Yes, Havoc now. To be a main slaying mm-hmm. SMG. Yeah. And they need Neptune to be a consistent main slaying SMG then because Havoc's yeah, never sure. been that in his career. Yeah, they need, they need Neptune to step up. For so sure. it's like... This is putting a ton of pressure on Neptune, I think. And uh, Mm -hmm. otherwise, you need Havoc to do something that we haven't seen him do in his whole career, which isn't like an easy thing to ask any player to do. And uh, that's why it just feels like a kind of horizontal move, maybe an improvement in Search and Destroy, like maybe some more consistency in Search and Destroy from from this team with Havoc. Yeah. Um, Thoughts, Sam? Yeah, I... Man, I was I was honestly shocked. I thought that there was no way Havoc was being brought back up. Right, it just looked um, more and more likely, and then they weren't really making any drastic moves. And we didn't really hear anything, and then it's like, okay, here we are. Like, here we I are. I still think yeah. it should have been John, but you know, that's me. I'm in the same boat, obviously, but 
Vivid. But yeah, Vivid would be interesting on this team. Um, but yeah, no, I... The thing is, is for sure, you know, they were hoping when they when they built this team and added in Neptune, Neptune was going to be that consistent playing SMG, which, yeah, again, he he showed signs of at the beginning. He was I mean, he got accused of uh, cheating, cheating by Krim. So so we know it's in him. But yeah, if if this with, with this move, if Neptune doesn't really improve. I don't see this team going much further than they already have. Yeah. Like I said, S and D yeah. I think is the only place where they could see improvement. Yeah. Um, hard point and response, hard, just response as a whole. It's hard to imagine. There'll be any amount like significantly yeah. better than before. Mm -hmm. Cause havoc, I mean, Slack was playing pretty well in control. So hard point yeah. would be the place where you're looking at, at, at havoc. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I mean, I don't trust havoc to be a dom, a dominant force in, in hard point right yeah. now. You know, I mean, yeah. is Neptune turning into a Frosty? What do you say about Frosty? Well, Frosty was just a solid player. I mean, he, I mean, just because of the Halo connection, and then he was solid and like he was good, but like he wasn't, he wasn't that thing that you needed it to be. Right, he, um, Shotzi, and Shotzi <laughs> was Shotzi ended yeah. up being what you needed it to be, but Frosty didn't do it. Neptune looks like he's not there he's just inconsistent um hurts does neptune play situation. cod next year let's put our bets in does neptune play cod in 2020 uh, in fall 2021 if if florida does not progress he's going to infinite he's going to infinite <laughs> <laughs> i agree with sam actually on that i i think right now he's gonna go to infinite mm -hmm. after this game he might if so, if so things don't progress for florida yeah he will. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it, like it, with Havoc on the team, I, I'm just projecting it, it won't get to like a top four, top five type yeah. team with, with Havoc right now. You needed that extra slaying upside. So, again, I and think then Neptune and Frosty will team an infinite. Yeah, man. That'd be a good no, time. Oh, they already have a team. So, they're good. Oh, well. Yeah. well you know, they can also have a team. Man can no. dream. Yeah. No. I don't know. I, again, I think that's why I was, I was thinking Zaptius, John. And then now Vivid are kind of like yeah. the guys who I was looking at. Yeah. And now Zap's not an option. So we'll see what happens. I, yeah. I don't think roster changes are necessarily done here for, for Florida in the next, you know, six weeks. But, you know, hey, Vance, Vance has proved that pro anything's yes, possible that's because true. of what Vance has accomplished Vance. this year. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Havoc could be the next best player in the league. You know, at this point, yeah. it's possible. Yeah. So, um, any other news? Oh, of course. This huge piece of news. We got to talk New York. <laughs> Holy I mean, crap. <laughs> our, how long in this are we at this point? We are, we are a ways we, in. We are an hour well, this in. is the big one now. We're on the big one. Hydra <laughs> is Alrighty. in. Alrighty. New York subliners. Hydra has now been scrimming with the wow. New York subliners. Diamond Con has hit the bench again. Bro. This is Which, wild. That's we like. There was a lot of Diamond Con fans out there. A lot of people think he was really good. Yeah. I and there was moments he where he really looked good. very, yeah. very good. And uh, it just was never, it was, again, consistency kind of the key with, with a lot of these players this year. And it, it just never got to a consistent point for yeah. Diamond. And, right. uh, you know, you look at the team and, and the, the other rumor aspect of it was that Sib was going to join this team. Yeah. And that Mac was going to get benched for Sib. So that got, Zuma thinks that that was never going to happen. And I definitely trust Zuma on that situation because he's very close friends with Sib. I, so yeah, I would, I really would imagine they're either. talking about that. So, but that was reported by CDL Intel that, that, that New York was close to getting Sib mm -hmm. from Atlanta and benching Mac, which would have been wild. And uh, yeah. I don't know. So thoughts on this whole New York situation. And Rex, of course, lead the way here. What are your thoughts on the situation with Mac, with Diamond Con, with Sib, with Hydra? Where are you at with this team heading into stage three? I'm really excited about it. I feel bad for Diamond because Diamond did what he needed to do. Diamond did all the right things and still just still gets dropped, which sucks. But this team going in was just really, really randomly put together once Zuma was dropped. Yeah. Or once Zuma left, I should say. Like, and then the whole Hydra couldn't get over. So they added an Ace and then you got Mac. And Clayster's playing with nobody he ever wanted to play with. And like this whole team was just a hodgepodge team. I mean, something inevitably was going to happen because the team we were watching was not the core team that it was supposed to be at all. And so Diamond going out, I mean, I feel bad for him, but I think 
if Hydra's what we think he is, this is going to be a big move for them. And it's for sure a role thing, and too. And you guys like, think Mac maybe going flex? You have Hydra and ace him? No, I think Hydra's flexing, isn't he? Is he going to flex? Isn't Hydra uh, AR? Well, he played played both this year. He's Did played he? main ASMG and flex, and played he's played all three positions okay. in the AM scene this year. Okay, um, because because part of me was thinking that the reason they didn't drop Mac over Diamond was because they wanted Hydra to play Diamond's position. Yeah, I, I I'm pretty confident that Hydra's flexing. Yeah, so which like, is great too. Yeah, you know, which is great. Uh, honestly, I thought Diamond has more potential than Mac. At this point, from what we've seen, but really? it, although Mac had some really nice maps there, the the last like, I mean, he saved. I think he might have saved his job those last few series. I mean, besides like yeah. the, I mean, the L.A. Thieves series yeah. series was ugly for everyone, um, especially Clay. Yeah, but, but but like aside from that though, it's like I don't know. I Mac has I feel high like I've seen improvement from Mac. potential. My, Mac has high pop off potential. Hmm. Like he have his duds. But then sometimes he's just an animal out there. Yep. And Asim too. Asim has kind of been more consistent in a way. Asim has been very consistent. Been I'd very say. consistent and an animal at the same time. So now yeah. we might be seeing something really special here, I think. Um, yeah, I suppose if we'll you're getting... wait and see. Yeah, I was just say like, you know, if we're seeing consistency from, from Hydra in the flex position more and than... And Clay. Clay needs that consistency yeah. too. yeah. <sighs> yeah, this this could be a pretty good move. Then you know, if you're like see, seeing Hydra pretty consistently every single map, do his thing. Placer just holds the you know holds the line, and then you would hope Mac just just keeps playing. Yeah, I think it's, like, it's a slaying upside and inside response. Exactly for so, sure. So yeah, no, I I think this could be what what New York needs. Honestly, it's you know, I still worry about Mac. Having more duds than pop up move, pop up yeah. moments, you and, know, and like and then the question mark is like, can Hydra be a good teammate in the long term? We don't yeah. really know. Like, is there going to be a language barrier? Is there is there any sort of issue with that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, in the long term, like personality wise, does he fit in with the group? You know, it's like that. I guess those are questions we don't really know. And, and so, this is the thing too is like this team. Clay's been pulling his hair out because like he's playing with nobody who really signed up to to play with like. He wanted Zuma, and then he also wanted Hydra. And yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. So now that he's squad. like, he's trying to like get some semblance of like what he kind of was feeling and what he was like understanding going in. He went into something and ended up completely changing to something he did not like. Was not thinking. Right. Original about. squad was Zuma, Hydra, Mac, and Clay. Right. And so now, if he adds Hydra in, like he wanted, he's gonna feel a semblance of like I feel like. A surety, like he just feels more safe with things. Just yeah. because now he has Hydra there with him, like he wanted. He knew Mac was going to be there. Now he's ace him. He likes ace him. Um, yeah, so I mean, I this was something that we talked about last week. It was like when Clay post posted that little message, like I might need to take a few days off. I I mentioned that it might be like a little cover for like buffer time for them to make the roster change moves happen. Mm -hmm. And I mean, here we are. Yeah, you know. So it's like it does mm -hmm. get pretty spicy. They don't play till Sunday. Mm -hmm. And they play phase on their first match. Yes. Rough. Which gets interesting. Rough for a pick. Um, but they do have a little bit extra time to prepare, you know, yeah. like the next few days. And so uh you know, I think it's it's very, very interesting. I mean, uh Simp seemed to think this team was gonna be pretty good. He was talking about I watched his little like group breakdown video of their matches, and you know, he had them he he said that they were gonna be a tough team and he was gonna like be pretty interested to see how uh, they played, and I don't know. Simp Simp had a lot of really kind things to say about New York with what this team could look like. So who knows? Uh, I'm pretty interested Simp. to see what can move forward. So yeah, I mean, we can, we're going to talk more about these teams in the next thirty minutes or forty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Holy, this is going to transition. We'll Jeez. see what we can do here. So without further ado, let's get right in to the predictions for Stage Three, Week One. Let's Holy go. <laughs> Let's start off our little group, our little uh, stage three predictions here. I think we should maybe talk about the groups for a little bit because obviously that matters in the long term for uh, the kind of the predictions and our thoughts on the whole the whole sy the system right now. Yeah. Um. It got very. It got pretty interesting with the group selection and and, and like. 
the what teams ended up picking. You know, they, they happened on Friday, and uh, you know they recorded a little bit early. I'd imagine they recorded like you know Tuesday, Wednesday, th- somewhere in there. They recorded yeah. somewhere in, in the middle of the week. And uh, what was your gut initial reaction of the groups? What, what were your thoughts as a whole, and uh, where were where you at with it? It was really interesting, the uh, Dallas and Optic placements. Yes. That was very interesting. Ultra chose Optic. Mm-hmm. So, and you know what's, what's really interesting, too, like, about, about these groups is really matchups do matter. So, maybe you think Dallas is better than Optic overall, but if Ultra does not want to play them, they're... For they're whatever put, reason, they're a little bit more scared of exactly. Optic. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're going to place them in, in the other group, so just... What's what's cool with this whole system is that like you get to see the teams like direct thoughts about direct one thoughts or two about teams. These teams where yeah. you might think the power rankings are different than the than the picking order, but what it comes mm-hmm. down to is if these teams feel like they match up poorly against a different team, they're not gonna put them in their group. So Yeah. That was interesting to see that Ultra would have rather played um Optic than Dallas. Optic than Dallas. Yeah. Or rather, would have rather played Dallas than Optic. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 But um, I don't know. Yeah. I guess for me, it was the the biggest, probably the biggest thing would have been that Seattle ended up getting chosen behind New York, Florida, and Paris. So, I mean that that means the pro teams doubt Seattle can keep up what they were doing and. I'm, that's a little bit surprising because I mean they've looked solid in their last few matches in the league, and I've I've really been happy with what I've seen from Seattle and the improvement that I feel like we've been seeing. Um, you know, in their last few matches, they they beat they beat the Mutineers three one. They lost in in a in a game five to the Rocker. Um, you know, they lost to Optic twice in that stretch, but they beat the Legion, who they got picked behind. They went to a game five versus Empire, and they and they beat the Mutineers again. So it's like. In season two, they really they they beat the teams they should have beat. They lost game five to the Empire and they lost to Optic twice. So it's like, and they're getting picked behind teams who have been struggling lately too. So it's like, a, and teams that they beat, like the Mutineers in Paris. Mm-hmm. So it's a little surprising that teams would are willing to, like, they that, that's what they think about Seattle. Yeah. Why why do you think that is? Is there any reason that comes to mind or thought? I there? think it's play style. I feel like. Those other teams are more, I guess, unpredictable. Yeah, whereas I, can see I that. think Seattle is more of a predictable team. So you can, you know, what you're you going to get with them. You know what you're going to get with them. Whereas the other teams, you don't always know what you're going to get. So I think it's more of like a play in that way. It seems like scrims have a way more impact than like what we've seen in in like actual gameplay. Like. Teams are scared of certain teams because of scrims, but then it turns like it's not about the matches. It's, 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 yeah, it's not, it's not about the matches. So there's just times where you're like, why did they pick that? But like, we we have no idea really like what they see behind the scenes where it's like this consistently right because they are scrimming these teams a lot more exactly behind the, behind the scenes. So like, it really is you know intriguing to see that, and especially um, who am I thinking of tweeted out? Um, I think it was Huke said like they're having a hard time. Dr- transitioning their scrims into matches where it's yeah. like I think they're like pretty much dominating scrims but they're having a hard time which again like they were still top top three and like we're you know saying again the, yeah horrible but yeah just disappointing just, just weekends for Empire just yeah. terrible but yeah no I think it, it really is intriguing to see if that changes with our land talk too it's like what we see scrims more line up with actual matches when 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 land comes back so for sure because scrims will be online versus like maybe yeah. maybe that's why yeah. maybe there's an x factor there so yeah no yeah, yeah. that's i agree that is interesting is there anything else to stick out to you about the the groups as a whole um if, i guess for our audio listeners group a is the ultra empire rocker mutineers and legion and lag mm-hmm. And then group B is Phase, Optic, Thieves, Subliner, Surge, and London. That is quite the group. London yeah. is in... <laughs> London. <laughs> that is a wild one. <laughs> that is a wild one for London. <laughs> Wowzers. Un- unfortunately, Zaptius is going to have a challenging stage Yeah, they're going to have some mountains to climb there. Yeah. 
Um, obviously, that comes down to what you believe about the thieves, subliners, yes. and surge. Yep. Um, but that does that does look intimidating on paper to it say does. the least. So, mm-hmm. um, anything else there like that that stuck out? Um, LAG getting picked like second to last was yeah. a little surprising. Yeah, kind of a almost disrespect LAG after they, you know, beat Phase and then all that. So yeah, no, LAG was picked last. Yeah, so that was pretty tough. It's like mm-hmm. you know, not. I mean, again. They, that was before they were going to make roster changes and everything, yeah. so maybe teams mm-hmm. just didn't know, but uh, yeah. a little bit surprising there. But yeah, overall, before. it's going to be interesting. Which which group do you think is tougher as a whole? This also probably comes down to what you believe about Toronto. Yeah. I'd say B, honestly. I, like, especially with Thieves, the way they performed right. was like totally unexpected. And now with New York bringing in Hydra, they're the fourth team in that group. And then or the C- fifth team in that group. And then Seattle also being more more consistent. Like, what, you know, what we've seen, obviously they, they dropped out a, a little early, but regardless, they've they've improved tremendously since the beginning. For sure. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. And like, like I said, like Seattle's their fifth team in the group, but the, their fifth team beat Group A's fifth team and fourth team the last times they played. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, yeah. you know, based off that, it's like, I don't know, bro. You know, that, that gets tough. So, and then with New York bringing Hydra, it's like, that's a scary group as a whole. A group is wild, crazy bro. group. It's yeah. crazy. But, um, all right, we got to get into these predictions. Or else we it. are never getting through this. So, um, let's go. Let's just roll right into let's it. Let's roll right into it. We got our Thursday matches. We're kicking off this weekend with Paris versus Dallas. Yes. Thoughts on this match? I mean... This is our temp debut in the in the mm-hmm. orange and white. Yep. For Paris. Good old orange and white. The orange and white. And uh, what what are you expecting to see from Paris in this match? And and what do you hope to see from Dallas, Rex? I think Paris is gonna try. They might be able to eke out one map. I think well, I Dallas, hope they try. I think <laughs> I think they're gonna try. I think <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I feel like they're going to go in with a lot of heart, you know? Oh, of course. I think Dallas, though, might be as well, just because mm-hmm. Dallas knows that they've just been looking not up to form, and they really, I feel like, during this stage, want to set the record straight with their team of, like, we are one of the best. So I think they're really going to try and show out on Paris and just flex on them. Um, I'm going to go Dallas 3-0. Oh, yeah. really? And it, yeah, and to your point again, this is a team Dallas that has finished top three in both majors so far. So it's like we're saying they're they're not up to form, but, but they, they suck. But but they're terrible, you know. <laughs> whatever. But yeah, no, exactly. They, yeah, they they literally are a top three team in both majors. So to me, this is a three one. Um, and yeah, people I was still consider three, them underperforming. Yeah, they're so, yeah. disappointed in their placements. So it's like. I yeah, no, yeah, a lot like, of upward growth here for sure. Their their team, you know, like we saw from Hook said, like you know they're having a, a a tough time transitioning their scrims to to performances. So like we know this isn't even the best Dallas, and they're still performing top three. So that, right. that's that's honestly scary. Oh, I mean, yeah, they're gonna win this map. I mean, yeah. you know, this is the sneaky like upset type game though, where Paris is this is the debut for a roster and you never fully know what you're going to get. Yeah. It's like, that's where you do have to be a little bit like, you know, careful, which is why I'm going three, one. Cause I think it could be, they could snag a map and, and they'll make things close. I mean, S and D's we, we've seen Dallas's S and D's lately yeah. has been pretty shaky. Mm-hmm. Um, um, obviously re- lately it's been a little bit better than, than before yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, but they're beatable in yeah. S and D for sure. And I think that's where Paris could fi- definitely find a map yeah. winner. You know, maybe a second, maybe a second. It could go three, two. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, okay, three, one. Map, second map of or second game of the evening would be Florida versus Toronto. What do you believe about Toronto? <laughs> what do you Toronto, believe about Toronto? Three, one on this. Three, one, Toronto. Huh? Hmm. I think, I think Toronto's gonna still. Toronto again is trying to make a statement here. Is like, no, we are legitimate. No one believes we're legitimate, but they want to say they are. Uh, Florida is coming in with havoc on the roster, but there are still going to be somewhat of weird growing pains with that team. Um, and Toronto is also trying to make that statement. I think Toronto is going to take it three one. Man, I've had some horrible troubles this year with bailing on teams the week before they they turn it around, mm-hmm. and then I've had a lot of pr- troubles putting my money on teams when the week before they tur- they they implode. Yeah. <laughs> It's like where I finally yeah. changed my mind about a team and then yeah. they do the opposite of what I finally mm-hmm. changed my mind about. Yeah. 
Here's here's what we have to deal with. Will Bance be the Bance we saw at the major? Right. Is he going to be slayer? Is he going to be the consistent slayer? I don't know. The other thing we have to deal with is the honeymoon period is real with Havoc joining the team. Even if we think it's a lateral move, we have seen for some reason it's hard to deny that teams with a roster change tend to perform well the first match or two. So is this a is this a thing where Bance doesn't perform as well and we see a Florida, a rejuvenated Florida? I mean, again, we definitely could. It, it's like, it's just hard to, um, it, it's hard to, it, it's hard because like Florida has disappointed us time so and time many again. times, yeah. so many times. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if I picked, I don't think I, I would be interested to see what team I've picked the most wrong. Because it's very possible it's Florida. <laughs> Probably. Because it's like too. I believed in them when they lose and yeah. then I doubt them when they win. Yeah. And uh, I've on, on the season been very positive about Florida and the potential of this team. And, you know, I've been pretty, I've been uh, definitely, you know, tough with Toronto. But I, yeah. I, you know, I've, you know, it's like both these teams at points needed roster changes. They, they've mm-hmm. now made roster changes. Yep. What are you going to go with? <laughs> I might go with a uh, Toronto 3 2. You know what I mean? Toronto 3 2 feels pretty good. No. I I don't want to doubt Florida, but it's like I feel like I need to see it before I pick uh Havoc. It's hard with Havoc joining in. Yeah. And after seeing Toronto Toronto win a series, I'm also gonna go Toronto 3 2. Um, but it could be a 3 1. I think Toronto will win it. Um yeah. but it's definitely not an easy prediction to say the least. So yeah. okay. Well, those are our Thursday matches. I'm definitely interested to see that that four one Toronto for sure. So Rex, lead us away with this one: Seattle v. LA Thieves. Oh Thoughts man, this, here. Is a, this is a difficult one for me. Yeah, originally really I was thinking LA Thieves, uh, like a three two, but now or a three one. But now I'm kind of considering like maybe Seattle can do it. I'm telling it's you right C- now, I have Seattle winning this one. I just don't know what the map count's going to be. Man, really That's though, tough. but like LA yeah. Thieves came in really hot. They have Draza has been looking good. Kenny Venom Venom was looking really good. Right. The LA only thing Thieves, I think is going to get LA Thieves is maybe a sense of overconfidence when it shouldn't be there, and I'm Seattle agreeing. will abuse that. <laughs> but really, a uh, key I'm word agree. today. <laughs> It's just like it's like few gays has been rolling around this season. It's a bunch of few gays, dude. Honeymoon period. How you, what, what, what's your where are you at with few gays? How are you feeling about few gays is a word, <laughs> dude. When I first heard it, I was like, I don't even know how to pronounce this word. Yeah, dude. It's, I heard pros. <laughs> I heard pros. That's use a bunch it. of few gays, bro. Few gays. Yeah, I don't know. the The cod pro lingo is tends to be annoying sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been wild but i mean for la thieves again they beat in the major they beat they beat the legion 3-0 then they they beat london 3-2 mm-hmm. then in a reverse sweep then they beat the subliners 3-0 in the shocking series that was and then uh, they ended up losing to the ultra they, they lost the round 11 on moscow they got they were up like 5-2 in that map i want to say it's like they had chances in that series i don't know man it's tough. I'm it, gonna it, go LA Thieves three. LA Thieves three two. Okay. I mean, it comes down to what you it's believe. It's like right now. Me, I, oh, it's really, really tough because they've they've shown, you know, a lot of promise inside of control against the Legion. Uh, London and the subliners winning all three of them, but then they got pretty handily smoked by the ultra on Garrison. And you're like, okay, that wasn't great. And you know, and it's hard to, it's hard to, would you, did you guys watch the, uh, the LA thieves little like documentary about like their little, like whatever that's called their series. They do about, uh, the, the team this weekend. It was really good. I highly recommend it. It was cool. They show a lot of the comms um, during the match. You got a good feel for, for, uh, Draza and like how Venom and could play with that team and you know they got good vibes man you got to respect those vibes they were high vibes after after winning those matches during during the major you know and you know it get definitely gives me some confidence I think I'm gonna go LA Thieves three two but I don't feel good about it this is probably the that might be the match I'll probably feel most or least confident about this whole weekend 
mm-hmm. which makes it very interesting. But I'm also going to follow with Rex and go LA Thief 3 2. So, Sam, you say you're going to Seattle. <sighs> I what think, you got? I think Seattle, if Seattle's going to win, I think if they do, they, they need to not let Close it go. out in a hard point. Yeah. They obviously, they're probably going to lose the control. <laughs> but they've been better in control. They've though. been better. They've been better. Um, but again, for, for the most part, so far, what we've seen, Thieves have looked good in control. Yeah, so you so, know, that so is tough to say. I think Seattle would, would, would need to win 3 1 in this one. If it goes to game five, I feel like it's going to be a, 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 a Thieves win. So that's what I'm thinking. I, I've just slowly built up my confidence with the Seattle roster. I've seen good, like, you know, Obviously, they like Surge won three of their last six controls. Yeah, so like maybe we see a resurgence control there. Maybe they lose S and D Ultra. Yeah, so I don't know, but for sure, game four. I don't think they should let it get to game five. Um, but yeah, no, I've I've got confidence in the Seattle roster. Thieves could still. I don't. I don't want to say like I'm not confident in Kenny as the main AR because we obviously seen him be nasty on it. So. I don't know. Bro, the I've, PPSH is back, bro. PPSH is back, so that could be <laughs> disgusting. Imagine coming up against Kenny in league play, and he's rocking the PPSH. PPSH. It's like World you're War done II. for. World War Get II off flashbacks. The <laughs> World War it's II over. flashbacks, dude. Holy cow! Yeah, but yeah, no, I'm I'm not completely sold on this roster yet for thieves, but I could be proven wrong. No, I mean it's fair. It's I want to buy into the surge roster, but it, it's like I don't know. I mean, they've beat the teams that haven't been good. They've had they've lost the teams that are good, but they've lost close. Like they they lost three two to the Rocker. Um, you know they lost to Optic three one. Then they got they got three would by Optic. It's just yeah, tough. Kind of weird. Yeah, they've had some weird. Right. That's results. why I think this, this. I think it's very likely this could go three two, and that's why I have LA Thieves winning. So, um, all right, London versus Chicago. Also interesting. I mean, just based yep. off of uh, so the new many London roster changes, the new yeah. London roster with Zapdius, obviously. And so now you got them coming up against Chicago in their first match. Um, you know, London by, by no means hasn't has a tough first weekend here with Chicago and with uh, LA Thieves in their first weekend in the CDL for Zapdius. Thoughts I'll, here. I'll tell you what optic are for sure vetoing Moscow S and D. That's for sure. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> No boy, oh, no. Shoot. Get him off that map. Um, but no, I think That's this is cold. gonna. I think I think this might be a three zero optic. Really? I think so. I'll give. Uh, I'm gonna go Chicago three one. Yeah. Lately, like, don't get me wrong. Optic New rosters are so tough. I mean, again, optic three zero the surge. But like, they've only had one three zero in their last. Their previous 3-0 was the first round against the subliners in the stage one major. Mm-hmm. So it's like they haven't been very good at putting teams away. They beat the, you know, again, they did do it against the surge. I'm going to go through one. Yeah. I'm going to go through one. You know, it's like, I, I do think they they showed a ton of improvement in S and D mm-hmm. right now. It's like, I, I'm not convinced across the board that they're there. And, and then it's a, it's a new London squad. So, you know, I could see London catching them, catching a map off of them. But would it, if a three, would a three be surprising? Definitely not. No. Um, leaving in Chicago and, and the improvement that we've been seeing from them. So, okay, LAGV Paris now. This no. is another an fun one here, especially with not up. knowing exactly <laughs> what we're who's getting, playing. who's playing for LAG at this point. Now, uh, you know, two days from their match. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Good stuff here from LAG. Tight. 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 That's tight. Tight. Thoughts here, Rex, lead the way. I'm gonna go LAG three two. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> with the, I think it's gonna be game forms. five S and D, and that's where <laughs> LAG is gonna reign. Man, man, dang! And Chino clutches up, baby. <laughs> Dude, if Chino's, the, I would Chino's love got that, baby. <laughs> that would make no sense role wise. But wow. <laughs> you know what's weird is that if it's exceed that goes in, I would, I would, could guess that Paris would do it, but. Well, then who do you think is going in? I don't know. Do you think it's going to be vivid? I mean, kind of. If they haven't said anything yet. But, I don't don't know. If it's vivid, this is what I'd predict. If vivid was in, I'd go LAG 3-2. If it's somebody else, then it's more of a toss-up. I'm hedging my bets and picking Paris. I was going to say, I think (laughs) think, think that's a safe one. I mean, this one is basically impossible to predict without knowing exactly who LAG's fourth is at this point and now it's like basically a toss-up between being vivid or exceed you know or maybe someone else i'm gonna go paris 3-1 
say LAG probably steals, you know, an S and D. They could they could win a hard. I mean, they could win any of the game modes, but most likely S and D. There, I'll get I'll give Paris three one. Um, if LAG's winning, it's three two. I'm I'm not giving more than three two for sure. Um, Sam. Oh, um, man, it just sucks that we like don't for sure know LAG here. Um, right. <clears throat> Um, I'm gonna say Paris three one. Join the club, baby. Get in here. I know. That's that's, a, that's definitely a safe one because like it's LAG could. I ain't betting on this roster, especially if they have a roster change two I days know. before the match. It just seems like they're kind of in shambles right now. We'll see. Yeah, though. we'll see. Um, Florida v Minnesota is the next the next match up here. You know, I I really I I mean I'm really bought into this Minnesota team. They I'm seem, really bought in. Man. I think they're the real deal. They're solid. They're just solid across the board. All three game modes. The vibes are high. Vibes are high. These roles make so much sense. The strengths for all the players. They really are balanced. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna go Minnesota three one. I'm gonna go Minnesota three one. Feeling really good about that. Rex, where you're at? I'm going Minnesota three one as well. Uh, I, I am a believer in the Minnesota team now. Um, Florida. I think they'll be improved, um, but they won't be there yet to beat Minnesota. Hot take, 3-0 Minnesota. Oh, really? Hot take. Wow. Mm. Mm. What do you think? What do you think? Wait, but then Toronto's going 3-2 with Florida. Serve it up to me here. eat that meatball. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to process that for like a mm, five seconds. Delicious? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the yeah. Minnesota meatball, the the good old Minnesota meatball. Facts. Yeah. No, I. This is probably not going to be a three zero, but I want to see it. So I'm <laughs> I'm throwing it out there. Yeah. Listen, we know Minnesota's winning. I just want to see a three zero. Okay, that's fair. Ooh, that's that's, that's my. Oh, you want to see a three zero? I want to see three zero. Oh, surprise! Because because I want to have a. It sounds oh, terrible. I oh, the <laughs> truth! The truth is coming out. The truth I is want coming John out on Florida. Okay, oh, yeah. I don't want to have it. The truth has been spilled. I have a vendetta. I want John. Sam in the pro is league. a f- havoc hater. I don't hate Ring havoc. the bell. I don't hate havoc. I just really like John. <laughs> Horny for John. Horny for John. Long for John. <laughs> Long John, baby. Long for John. Oh man, that good was stuff good. there. That's fantastic. Rex, yeah. okay, Chicago v uh, Seattle. Rex, take us away. The CVC. I'm going for Chi. CVC. Uh, CVC. Chicago's gonna win three two though. I made it a close matchup just because it really? feels like Seattle Ooh. can see it. The thing with Seattle is that they they try they like. I feel like all they do is game plan for like these great notable teams. Um, Again, Chicago has beat them the last two times they played three oh three one. Right, it's worth. So I'm gonna go Chicago three two though. Okay, all right. I'm gonna go Chicago three one. This this smells and tastes like a three one. I think so too. I think so too. I mean, if you, you want to better use, eat that up, man. If you want to use the like, it's hard to beat a team three times. <laughs> You know, there That's is fair. there is the that repeat. There is that thing that we see in sports where it is hard to beat a team multiple times in a row. Just saying, but Re-peter. I feel like you know because I am the, the master of sports. <laughs> yes, yes, I do watch all balls that go into things. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> You're gonna dig yourself out of this one, bro. <laughs> oh man I mean when you think about it like oh, yeah, 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 yeah you yeah. know you know what I mean yeah upright Nets hoops and <laughs> Nets. such <laughs> anyway okay, anyway I'm just gonna Chicago 3-1 Chicago's got the biggest balls baby 3-1 let's go yeah I mean again it's just coming down to like <laughs> matchups you know the, mm. the improvement in S&D for Chicago it's like okay you feel pretty good about them in all three game modes at that point against Seattle and like, you know, maybe Seattle, you know, has a better, a better map takes one off of them. I think three, one makes a lot of sense there for Chicago and just the matchup as a whole, just play in their favor. I think we saw that in the last two times they've played 
it's been pretty easy. I mean, Seattle won the first map again in that last series. They beat them on, I think, on raid. If I remember right, they beat them on raid, maybe. And, uh, you know, then they, they pretty handily won the rest of the series. Uh, yeah, so it was raid. They beat them. They lost 252-02, and then they won 6-2, 3-1, 250-183 at Garrison. So I feel pretty good about uh, Optic 3-1 there. Alrighty, what's up next? We got London, London versus LAT. London versus LAT, which... Small I'm, sample size this year. Yes. I'm I'm going with London 3-1 on this one. Ooh. Wow, you're Based low on up. Seattle. Why are you low on Seattle? Because you had you had LAT beating them 3-2. You had Chicago beating them. Which maybe that means you're low on Chicago. But no, no, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'm low on Seattle, but I think Seattle's very much like a matchup okay. based team. Like they need to game plan or they kind of get screwed. Um, okay. Where, mm-hmm. like, this London LA Thieves, I think, well, it's first off, look at London. Half the team is no West R. Well, half the team is West R. On a roll. Who was crushing the amateurs that were on this Your LA rolls. Thieves roster. Well, I guess Balls. Venom's on this roster, but I don't know. You got two of West R versus one of Venom. Then you got Draza. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I think when it comes to like London, it's like you're looking for that more scrappy matchup, and and with LAT right now, you're like they're not going to be the fundamental team. So like now you're going talent v talent, and with Zapdius there, I think it get get pretty interesting for London in a series. So I could see a three two here, but I'm going to go LAT three two. Mm-hmm. And uh, that gets pretty interesting. That's a really fun match. I'm it's definitely a matter of me of whether Shawnee can do something or not. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he's been pretty good this year so far, though. I'm gonna go London three two. Really, really. Whoa. Welcome to the UK, mate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the nice. UK, mate. Nice. What another Irish accent? Like the London Royal <laughs> Ravens about you. That's what we need. There you All go. Podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Why is that, Sam? Why London three two? I mean, again, small sample size. Um. I feel like. So you're a little bit of an LAT doubter. Oh yes, because um, you had Seattle beating him. Now you have London yes. beating him. So they're starting zero and two. That's a pretty disappointing start for for yes. LAT there. Yeah, which could be again could be completely wrong. Um, but I, I guess I'm like wanting to see more. Which like is you know it's not it's 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 no fault of theirs. That that obviously performed very well at the last major. It's more of just like the roles I still want to see cemented on that team. Whereas on London, the roles make a lot of sense now and. You've seen, you know, Zap and Paul perform really well. It's just like you said, the like Rex, you know, is is Shine going to be that? I'm just nervous to bank on Zed, Zed the, and the Zed Zap, Zap combo, combo right now. You know, yeah. that that's my biggest worry, especially yeah. when you're playing as pretty dynamic SMGs here for LAT yeah. right now. I'm I'm very much banking on that combo working. It's weird to me. I feel like Zed's a player that can mesh with a lot of people. I to agree. be honest with you, I agree. Which, that's why might. I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. I feel like Zed That's can play with a lot of players alongside him and like mesh with anybody. I think it's totally fair. That is I, it's fair. going to be a fun one. And like we're going to learn a lot. This Again, it's so tough always these first weeks with this many roster changes. I mean, you know, you're going, we're going in a little bit blind here for some of these picks, you know, with, with how much information we're we have going on. Because there's always a new roster pickup. <laughs> true, true. Want to make a hat bet on that? Oh, hat bet time! Give hat me bet. that lat. Do you wait? Do you want it? Do you want it in the Seattle match? I'd prefer it. I'd prefer it in this one. Yeah, let's do this one. Cause this one's more spicy because it's like it really could go either way. Oh, baby, Venom the Paul. We got the hat, and our first hat bet, <laughs> and so next week one of us will be wearing a hat bet during predictions. Yes, I can't nice. wait. Oh, it's going to be good. Be fun. Nice. You heard it here first. And uh, New York versus Atlanta is our next matchup here. And uh, thoughts on this one? This is interesting. Rex, what do you believe? I think it's going to be a hot one, but I think Atlanta's going to take both S and Ds. Oh, Um, there's going to be two. Game five. Yeah, I think it's going to go game five, Atlanta three, two. So so you're seeing, is that that more of a testament to New York really starting to click quickly? Like if New York was playing another match this weekend, I think, and that means you're pretty high on New York. I'm pretty high on New York. Yeah, of course I'm high on New York. Like they, they've been killing it. Now they're adding Hydra to the mix. Then you get the hype of like New York. Well, they, they were have to go it. 
when they have to go against like this one team, this is Hydra's debut. Clay's the type is like, let's time to show out here. Like they're going to go dumb hard, I think. And I think that's what's going to get them to that three, two. I, I don't performance think they'll pull out the you? win. Yeah. Um, Clay? Did, did, nah, yeah. man. He just no. had an off, off, off major. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm not worried about it either in the long term. I, I mean, again, I'm really, really excited for this New York team moving forward. But, you know, you got to feel pretty good about Atlanta. Atlanta is just so, like, it, it, like, this is not a testament to, like, New York being bad. Atlanta is just so And this good. is their only match this weekend. Yeah. They're winning this thing. They're for sure winning this. They just lost to Ultra, dude. Are you giving New York a map? Yes. 3-1 Atlanta. I, yeah, I think it's probably fair to pick a, pick a 3-1. I kind of want to take a 3-0. I mean, based off Simps, like, he was really circling this one. He thinks New York's going to be a pretty good team. And, I don't know, based off Simps' little video of the, of the preview, he, he was really highlighting this match. Like, we need to go hard here. We need, we need to win this. Mm-hmm. And, like, based off their group with Optic there, they, they need to win these matches. So, this, oh, these yeah. are huge. Yeah, the, the no only one safe. they really should be, like, losing is Optic, theoretically. And if they lose to New York, it's like, oh, crap. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... It is interesting because Simp didn't even mention LAT as like a, like a, he's like the two tough matchups. He's like probably the toughest matchup in the group will be, uh, <laughs> That's be a uh great Optic thought. and, Optic and, Optic and, uh, Sim, uh, New York. I found someone who talks quieter than me. Yeah, Simp in his videos. Yes. But I mean, hey, you know, he absolutely dominates. He well, goes to those like pub matches and it's like, He's dropping six piece after yeah. six piece. Yeah, something um, I can never but do. But anyway, so. as ATL three one <laughs> again, it's like inside of each game mode. Um, hard point, you're you're favoring them all game modes here, yeah. and you know this could easily be a three zero. I wouldn't be surprised on a on a honeymoon phased uh, New York, which can be a pro. Lately, it's been a, it's a pro. Oftentimes, it has not been in COD history where you're on a new roster, you have four days of practice, five days of practice, um, and and you're playing against a very motivated Atlanta team here. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about ATL taking this one, but we'll see. All right. The last match of the day here of a marathon episode, Dallas V Toronto yeah. thoughts on this matchup and where we're at. Obviously the last time we saw this one, Toronto took, three, one. took down Dallas yep. in a, yeah. Three, one. Was it Yep. in uh, the semifinals? Yep. And so what, Jeez. what are your thoughts here, Sam? Oh man, it's, Last time, oh yeah, last time Dallas faced them off on three straight raids. It, mm-hmm. They Empire won the checkmate as they should. You'd expect them to, and then they played raid, 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 and and lost because raid is ultra might be the best raid team in 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 the league. I think this time around, the, the Empire's winning this match, and I would love you to bet so? up with someone about this. Man. Um, if anyone wants to bank on ultra, I would very much like to bet on Empire here. Uh, Rex, want to bet against Empire? No, because I have Empire <laughs> winning this. <laughs> All right, Rex, what are your thoughts then? So, yeah, I, I think Ultra during the major were riding a sort of high. Um, That's kind of what got them going and really got like, but I don't think it was a main, like, it's going to be really hard to be able to maintain that high as okay. Ultra going into, especially now, just these league matches um, where it's not even tournament. So I think Dallas on the other side, flip side is going to be very much wanting to prove a point here this whole stage is going to be dallas being like we are a great team do not doubt us it's time for us to take down the people who won the last major and just put that rumor to rest that they're somehow this great team and dallas really wants to maintain that they're still a top a top dog um right so I think it, Dallas it is going to beat them 3-1 it gets scary when dallas is out for revenge yeah, yeah. You know? so i think dallas 3-1 here yeah, I think Dallas 3 1 makes the Yeehaw. most sense. Um, could this be a 3 0, Sam? I'm going to. I'm going to be. Oh, a ultra bit optimistic. Dark horse. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Toronto 3 2. Whoa! I'm whoa! Do double hat bet? Yeah, let's do it. Whoa! Double I don't know hat. what that means. But... I think you wear two hats. But yes. What if, two what hats. if I win one, but then you win one? Does it cancel? Oh, show we both two wear hats. hats? Do we both wear hats? Good yes. Question. Hmm. One of you has to put the other person's hat on with your mouth. 
with oh the uh, oh the mouth. So like, like you put the bill of the mouth, bill oh, of the hat geez. in your mouth, and you have to like set it <laughs> on top of Josh's head or I him on top that. of your head. Not that. No. No. <laughs> Okay, let's take the one hat back. Uh, take the one Comment hat section, let them know. That's what you want. <laughs> a little too uncomfortable. <laughs> let them know. Semi. Oh. But at the end of the day, I, I do think that Dallas is, is in a pretty good spot here, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So, with that said, I think we can get into our little uh, intelligent or irrelevant. Let's get into it, see what the people have to say. Let's go. The ability to speak does not make you All righty. Here we go. So, Sam, lay it on us what we got today in the intelligent or relevant debate. Let me lay it on you here. Okay. Oh, Which lay it on me. player will make the biggest impact on their new team? Okay. Vote. Well, I don't know why I just read that. Obviously, we're going to vote. The players <laughs> I am saying are Zaptius, Temp, Hydra, or Havoc. So, who do we think the people think will make the biggest impact? Zaptius, Temp, Hydra, or Havoc? It's going to be Hydra, right? Hydra. I mean, Zaptius, right? You really? Think so? Does the people I feel think like our fans actually usually make different ideas? Like, how dare they? How I think people they? are going to pick Zaptius. I mean, I think it's going to be Hydra. Okay. I'm voting for Havoc because I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Here we go. 51% overall lead, Hydra. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. 51%. That's significant. 21% temp. Oh, people be high on Paris, huh? And then 16% zap, 12% havoc. Oh, wow. So it's actually somewhat close. Yeah. That's actually a surprise. Okay. I mean, that's fair. I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll give you the intelligent stamp this time around, you folks yeah. out there. I mean, that's a fair play. I mean, any, any comments down there from the people? We got one um, from at. B- B- uh, so B-I-C-H <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say Bick Okay, fair <laughs> Joe Dito Bish Bisho Joe Dito says Most will say Hydra But New York was already a good team without him I say Tech yes. because Paris felt Like they were on the verge of being that top six sleeper team But they were missing that confident sub And with Temp playing a little more loose That team is going to improve a lot I like that. Um, okay. Here's one from at Kova BB Havoc. Mm. We just saw the impact two high engagement subs can have on the map when they are frying Kleenex and Bants. Havoc is going to unlock Neptune's ability. Very interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have one from at Waniac. Has to be Hydra. He's n- not the most hyped up amateur for no reason. Kid's going to make waves. That's fair. So, Interesting. Huh. Okay, some solid, some solid stuff there. Intelligent, intelligent today. Good stuff from the people. Um, last thing of the day, of course. What are you watching this week, Rex? What are you watching? Um, oh, I've been watching the TV show called Last Kingdom. Oh on yeah, Netflix. I don't know if so I've talked fire. about this already, but I think we mentioned it once, maybe. Utrid uh, Ragnarsson. Utrid Ragnarsson. It's pretty good. I'm it's enjoying so it. So good. Bebin Bad. It's. It, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's. There's a lot of Game of Thrones elements definitely being like the yeah. characters they build. I'm like, that's kind of like this person in Game of Thrones. For sure. Um, but it's still a good show. It's like now that I've finished Game of Thrones, this is a really good replacement and kind of keeps me in the medieval right. realm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. I, mean, I think we talked about this at, at some point before, but like I just love the historical baked in stuff. It's like really, really cool and mm-hmm. just good vibes. So. It's a dope show. Anyway, Sam, what you got? This is more of a recommendation I watched this weekend. Oh. Overlord. You ever seen that? No. World War II zombie movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a good movie. That's on Netflix, right? Yeah. Or Amazon. Mm. It's, it's free on Amazon if you have Prime. Makes sense. But it was the, I believe the studio with J.J. Abram yeah. was part of it. But man, is that, if you like creepy and then you like love World War II eerie. Movie, World War II war mixed in with That's like dope. creepy. Oh, dude, it was so good. Highly recommend it. Heck yeah, it was good. I mean, I episode was on that Captain America or Captain or the a Falcon Winter, Winter Soldier, Soldier and the Falcon Winter Soldier vibes. You yeah, know? um, that has been dope been good. so far. And so the season finale is this Thursday, which is wild. Um, it's gonna be dope. So I'm really looking forward to that. But all right, 
That's it for the podcast, you crazy hooligans. The longest one out yet. there. This <laughs> I, this is very, very possible. The longest one of all yeah. time. Just keep And um, I mean, we, we're giving the people what they want, I guess, at this point. <laughs> it's <laughs> a shame this comes out on Wednesday because, I mean, there is a lot to get through in the 24 yeah. hours when this comes out. I'm trying to get this out maybe as fast as possible tomorrow. Hopefully, I can get it out by like maybe 2 p.m. or something. and Just juice that G feel in your veins. 3 p.m. Yeah, we'll see. Right yeah, 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 yeah. And see what we can do. So... Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Yes. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Obviously, drop all your comments down below. Um, drop a five-star review on Apple Podcast. We love seeing those comments on YouTube. We love seeing those reviews on Apple Podcast. Yeah. But as always, guys, I'm Josh. So basically, to my right is Bachelor on Scorpio 3. To our Friday strap per use is Rex Shade Nero. And guys, this has been the best of three comedy sports podcasts, and we will see you next time. We out. <laughs>